such as the resort-style swimming pool. Schedule a tour today at SummerLakeAPTS.com or give them a call at 334-298-1543. Spring is in the air, and Sun South John Deere has the equipment to get your chores done quickly, efficiently, and more affordably. With a full roster of riding mowers, utility vehicles, and tractors, Sun South offers something for everyone. Stop by and see us at 30 Parkman Avenue, Columbus, Georgia, or visit sunsouth.com to find the right equipment for you. Any budget, any project. Be sure to thank Sun South. Proud to be the preferred lawn and garden dealer of the Columbus River Dragons. Who's ready for baseball? Remember, fans, the Columbus Chattahoots come flying into town to bring baseball back to Columbus this summer, playing in the Sun Belt Baseball League. Stay up to date with everything going on with the team leading up to opening day by following the team on social media at Hoots on First. That's H O O T S on First on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Full season tickets are already on sale at gohoots.com slash tickets. Get your seats now before they're gone. Don't miss a moment when baseball makes its long awaited return to the Chattahoochee Valley. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons and Enforcers, game three of the Ignite Cup Finals. Your River Dragons holding a 2-0 lead in the series. I'm Zach DeBozart. Scott Brand is with us here on our last segment on radio before we rejoin in on television, WTVM Bounce 9.2. Boy, it's an exciting day here in the Chattahoochee Valley. You can feel it, can't you? Absolutely. I've been walking around town, Zach. It's been pandemonium left and right. People are going nuts. We're ready for this season to end and end with a victory. All right. We're going to have the starting lineups for you here momentarily, but just giving us a chance to talk a little bit longer about this game here, Scott. I mean, back in Elmira, game two, you're in double overtime and I know it just seems like any bounce can go anyone's way, and this could be 1-1 one, one, or 2 nothing. But really, I think the fact that you had won game one obviously put Columbus on such a good, strong foot that by winning game two in double overtime, you really feel like you're in a house money situation. You absolutely are, and I mean, you're big house money, and so I don't know why we would go out and play anything other than the way we played aggressive, uh, go out there and try and put them away, put them away early so we can... Pop the ice cold Pabst Blue Ribbon and enjoy a great night. This should be a lot of fun. We already know about a lineup change on the River Dragon side and on the Enforcer side, but we are going to wait for starting lineups to bring those to you officially. Let's go ahead. Oh, no, we got to keep going here for about another minute or two, Scott. I apologize. We got our, our uh, TV queue officially here on us. When do we got to take this break? That so, satellite hookup. Yeah, I know, right? It's, uh, it's a crazy thing going on here, but I tell you what, whether you're listening in over the radio network or on YouTube, or soon you'll be joining us on WTVM Bounce 9.2. I mean, it, it has just been a wild ride to get to this point here, Scott. The fact that we even played a season and we're here on the final weekend of it, I think deserves a lot of kudos league-wide. I think it does. You're right, league-wide. It's just not the River Dragons, but it's the owner of Elmira. It's the owner of, of Port Huron, Barry Soskin in, in, in Carolina, his group that he's got there, and, and even the teams that didn't participate for them to continue on. And we're looking forward to next year, but not before hopefully uh, tonight uh, somebody is winning the cup. Yeah, that is certainly the hope. The Ignite Cup is here in the building, and uh, River Dragon staff have not even gotten a chance to look at it, Scott. That's what uh, that's what the uh, the message has been on down, a very uh, – a very respectable tra tradition of superstition, I guess. Yeah, nobody looks at that <laughs> cup or nobody even – we were lucky we were able to talk about it. So it, it's <laughs> one of those things that it's just a hockey uh, tradition and you respect hockey traditions. Yeah, definitely do. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take the break now. When we come back, we will be back joined in with our television affiliate, WTVM Bounce 9.2. Don't go anywhere. Columbus River Dragons Radio Network. Founded in 2013, the LaGrange Street Hockey League has been offering a free program dedicated to bringing hockey to the people of LaGrange. They are LaGrange's only dedicated hockey club and serve to help grow the sport in the West Georgia area with youth and adult leagues open for all players and all skills. There's never a bad time to pick up a new fun activity. Located inside the Mike Daniels Rec Center off of Lafayette Parkway with facilities inside to make your hockey experience the best it can be. For more information, visit them online at lagrangehockey.com. It's been over a dozen 
dozen years, Columbus, but finally we can say it, baseball is back. The Columbus Chattahoots will call Golden Park home in 2021, and you can reserve your spot now for every home game this season with a season ticket membership. Visit GoHoots.com slash tickets to get started on picking your ideal seat to see the Hoots take the field in June. Members get all sorts of perks too, like merchandise savings, playoff ticket priority, and more. Full season packages start as low as $125 and are available at GoHoots.com slash tickets. GoHoots.com slash tickets. At Texas Roadhouse, we're famous for our hand-cut steaks, fall-off-the-bone ribs, made-from-scratch sides, ice-cold beer, and our irresistible fresh-baked bread. We take great care in everything we prepare, serve with big smiles at a great value. Visit us at 2970 North Lake Parkway in Columbus or call Ahead Seating at 706-323-6616. Curbside takeout available, too. We're proud to be your hometown favorite and are always focused on providing legendary food and legendary service. Texas Roadhouse. Your favorite BK menu items are now buy one, get one for a dollar at Columbus Area Burger King restaurants. You can get the Whopper, original chicken sandwich, chicken fries, big fish sandwich, or the Impossible Whopper for a dollar with purchase of another featured item. Use the BK app to order and you can get your faves delivered to your door for a one dollar delivery fee. Offer also available by ordering at BK.com. Schuster Enterprises and Burger King are proud playoff partners of your Columbus River Dragons. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons and Elmira Enforcers getting themselves ready to go for game three of this Ignite Cup Finals. I'm Zach DeBozard, he's Scott Brand, and hey, welcome in TV audience, WTVM bounce 9.2. Man, oh man, we were able to get this one on the air too, Scott, just when we thought the TV deal was over. We did, we thought we were done, but uh, WTV, hey, uh, and Bones TV, thank you so much for letting us uh, bring uh, hockey to you. And on top of that, maybe what's going to be an extremely, extremely special night here in uh, here in Columbus, Georgia. Very well could. We're still waiting on our starting lineups for tonight's game. We can tell you we know the goaltending matchup tonight. It'll be a battle of the ones, Scott. Number one, Jared Rutledge for the River Dragons. Obviously, we've seen him so far in this series. He has been phenomenal. But over on the other side of things, we kind of joke that in Elmira, it seems like when you lose a game, you lose the crease and they keep rotating. That's been the case here in game three. Joe Young is getting the start for the Elmira Enforcers. Dylan Kelly the scratch, and Troy Passingham is the backup tonight. So the rotation keeps going, even in the playoffs. Well, if you notice, I just gave Zach a surprise look because <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, I guess I was not prepared to tell you, hey, anything about this. But you know what? In the playoffs, you get desperate. Sometimes you got to make changes. This is one of those changes. It could get the team fired up. Defensively, you usually play tougher in front of a goaltender that maybe you don't have a lot of confidence in. But I know this young man. He's pretty good in that, and the Dragons are going to have to shoot a lot, shoot often, and shoot hard. Indeed they will. Joe Young, I mean, he's had a couple of cups of coffee in the SPHL. He is definitely one of those guys that is capable of making it to the next level, and there's a reason he's on this Enforcers roster for the playoffs, and you definitely mentioned it right there, Scott. Jared Rutledge, on the other hand, 2-0 record so far this season, a two point, or this postseason, I should say, 2.08 goals against, 9.32 save percentage. He was remarkable in many different parts in games one and games two. I mean, you look, he had shutout streaks of 40 minutes plus in the, in the middle of each game. Jared Rutledge is one of the reasons we're here and we have the opportunity tonight to uh, to bring a championship to Columbus. Zach, you hit the nail on the head. It, tremendous. Uh, uh, making stops he had no business making. The important things, he stops the one he's supposed to. And, and then he comes up with those big saves. And, and that's that's the difference in the River Dragons. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the starting lineups and the roster notes for you as well. And we will continue to break down tonight's Game 3 matchup, the River Dragons and the Elmira Enforcers. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Yeah. 
That's right, the Chattabruchi Southern Brew House is the official post-game hangout of the Columbus River Dragons, serving their exclusive River Dragon Red Ale on all game nights, located just a mile and a half from the Civic Center at 1301 6th Avenue. There's no excuse not to get out with some friends and enjoy the night with some quality craft brews. Chattabruchi Southern Brew House is locally and veteran-owned and offers live music from 6 to 10 on Friday and Saturday nights. Make sure to follow them on social media for all the latest events. For a creative, fine dining experience in downtown Columbus, look no further than Stock Market Dueling Kitchens. A fresh spin on surf and turf, offering only the highest quality ingredients to get the best out of the stockyard and the fish market. They're located at 1232 Broadway in Columbus, just minutes from the Civic Center. Reservations encouraged and can be made by calling 706-507-3530. Open for dinner seven days a week and serving lunch on weekends. Stock Market Dueling Kitchens is a go-to destination in Columbus. Let Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. The Humane Society of Harris County and Hamilton is envisioning a safe, healthy, and enriching environment for the people and animals of their community. They are a no-kill shelter seeking a place to serving animals and loving homes in the area. Can adopt but want to help? The Humane Society of Harris County is always looking for volunteers to help in all sorts of roles. From animal care to office work, your time will do a world of good towards their mission. Call them at 706-582-3007. Dr. Weiss and the Humane Society of Harris County are proud partners of the River Dragon. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons and Elmira Enforcers. They're about 10 minutes or so away from dropping puck to ice here on Col here in the Columbus Chattahoochee Valley area. And I got to tell you, Scott, if you uh, remember, if you're a Cotton Mouse fan, the 2011-2012 season, that championship was won in the SPHL, but it was not won in this building. So you really get a sense here in this building. The fans are excited to potentially see something sometime this weekend on their home ice. River Dragons just need one of the next three, being up 2-0 in the series. Yeah, I'm not sure that a championship's ever been won in the building in terms of the ice hockey. So that would be huge if, uh, if we can pull it off, you know, and... Uh, and it's good for the community. Listen, we all know what's gone on for the, for a year now. Uh, we're, we're, we're at the point where we're over a year with, with the COVID thing, and I think people, we're, we're getting tired of it. We need something for the community, and, and, and this would be great. This would be great if the Dragons can, can for, deliver. For those of you watching in on TV, by the way, uh, we apologize. We're working through one or two bugs back here, so we've kind of moved to a safe shot on the ice, if you will. Uh, as we are uh, working through some hiccups here and there, but we should have this all straightened out. My puck drop. It's an important one, Scott. Now my, we have. My guess is Elmira did something to your <laughs> They game. might have. You never know. But you know what? Let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. We already mentioned Jared Rutledge versus Joe Young. That is the starting netminder battle. Let's go ahead and put Elmira's lineup up first. On defense, number two, Alexi Girard, and number 24, JT Walters. In the forward group, number 14, Carter Shinkarek at the middle. Number 13, Brett Gravel on the left wing. Number four, Mark Essery on the right wing. Uh, Carter Shinkarek felt like the only centerman the enforcers had through both overtime periods in game two. Very trustworthy, very dependable in the dot for Elmira. Yeah, I, uh, you're absolutely right. He uh, He's definitely stepped up and... And you know, it's not it's not that anybody's necessarily playing bad for Elmira. It's who's stepped up. I think we've had a lot more dragons step up and uh, and realize, listen, it's do or die situation. And uh, you know what, Elmira tonight, you know, you have that saying about a wounded animal. They're coming in here a little wounded, so we'll see who steps up for them. Taking a peek over at the River Dragons starting lineup in front of Jared Rutledge. The defense is number four, Jake Schultz, and number seven, Wojtek Zemlichka. Uh, Schultz, Scott, remember he had a goal back in the second period uh, of the game two. Actually had a chance to win it, too, in the first overtime, rang a post. Uh, he has been solid alongside Zemlichka, a very strong tandem on the blue line. Absolutely. I mean, those two create a lot of offense. And, uh, and so we're, we're expecting big things from them, uh, and, and, uh, and so we're, uh, we're excited about it. 
The forward group here for the River Dragons, number 12, Connor Fries in the middle, number 14, Chase Fallis, and number 23, C.J. Stubbs. Let's go ahead and let's take another break. When we come back, we will be almost ready to go. We'll have one more segment here on TV and ready to go for tonight's Game 3. The Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Oral and maxillofacial surgeons Mark Zwicky, Lee Allen practice a traditional scope of oral and maxillofacial surgery with over 60 years of combined expertise, ranging from oral pathology to wisdom tooth removal. They perform a full range of dental implant and bone grafting procedures, as well as non-invasive surgical facial cosmetic procedures. That level of expertise is why the River Dragons trust them. Call them in Columbus at 596-1757 or in LaGrange at 884-2655. Do you own a home that needs an exterior tune-up? Window World is proud to take integrity to a new level with the best price, product, and warranty guarantee on windows, siding, doors, and more with professional installation. If you want the highest quality product at the lowest price, backed by a lifetime warranty, call or click Window World for your free, no-obligation in-home estimate today. Window World, simply the best for less. Call, click, or visit Window World today. Looking for the best pizza in town for the price? Look no further than Pizza Pronto in Columbus. Pizza Pronto on 2nd Avenue in downtown Columbus has some of the best dishes around. And they aren't stingy with the toppings either. Pizza, pasta, kebabs, and more. It's all great at Pizza Pronto. Call in a to-go or delivery order at 706-596-9855. That's 706-596-9855. Give them a like on Facebook and enjoy some of your favorite meals today. At Georgia Power, we believe our lake should be filled with water, not trash. That a healthy honeybee population will pollinate a healthier environment. That building homes is just as important as powering them. That's why we believe what we do off the grid is just as important as the clean, safe, reliable, affordable energy we provide on it. And that's a different kind of energy. Visit georgiapower.com slash community. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons and Elmira Enforcers in game three of the Ignite Cup Finals. I'm Zach DeBozart, he's Scott Brand. One more segment here on the pregame show, Scott. It's going to be a fun one here for sure. And you've got a couple of uh, news and notes for us uh, around the championship history here in the Civic Center. Well, yeah, I do. And Lee, thank you very much for getting this to me. Indianapolis had beaten uh, Columbus in the old Central Hockey League. That was done here in Columbus in 2002. Pensacola won the SP. Uh, SPHL uh, championship here in Columbus in 2014, but Columbus did win the first SPHL championship in 2005. Okay, so so it has been around has, 16 years since a Columbus team has won on home ice. Yes, but the big thing is who cares? We're winning it. <laughs> That's certainly the hope. Three games potentially, but only need one if you are Columbus. Up two games to none in this best of five series. One more time, your starting lineups here on the River Dragons broadcast network. Jared Rutt versus Joe Young is your goaltending matchup tonight. The River Dragons on defense, number four, Jake Schultz, number seven, Wojtek Zemlichka, and the forwards, number 12, Connor Fries, number 14, Chase Fallis, and number 23, C.J. Stubbs. Over for the Elmira Enforcers, Alexi Girard and J.T. Walters are the defensemen, and then the forwards, Carter Shin, Carrick, Brett Gravel, and Mark Essery. Scott, some final words before we get ready for pre before the, start, the drop of the puck. Listen, game sold out tonight, so the only way to watch it is on YouTube. Of course, 9.2 bounce TV. It's loud in here. This is going to be an advantage. Let's go, River Dragons. Let's bring the championship home to Chattahoochee Valley. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, call of the Sun South John Deere first period in game three next on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. You've been listening to the Burger King pregame show on 106.9 Really Rocks. The call of the game is just moments away after we pause for a short break on the River Dragons broadcast network. 
If you're looking for quality dental work, look no further than Largeman Dental in Columbus, the River Dragon's trusted oral care provider. Largeman Dental provides cleaning services, restorative work, cosmetics, prosthetics, and Invisalign braces too. Dr. Largeman has over 19 years of clinical experiences in all phases of dentistry and holds memberships in four different esteemed dental societies. Set your next appointment by calling 706-322-6581 or visit them online at largemandental.com. Hey, did you know that one in three people are without adequate life insurance? At the Farmers Menifee Agency, it's always life insurance awareness season. Why don't you let one of our agents update your coverages and get policies in place to make sure your legacy is protected? We also write auto, home, boat, and rentals insurances too. Stop by the 2429 Norris Road location in Columbus or call us at 706-341-1223. And guess what? At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we sing a thing or two. For all your equipment rental needs, you need River City Equipment in Columbus. Everything from bulldozers, mini excavators, skid steers, and more are available for rent at 329th Street. Call them today at 706-536-8417 and ask about their commercial financing. Be sure to give them a like on Facebook, too, for any upcoming equipment and rental sales they're having. They also have a team specializing in equipment restoration, too. River City Equipment is a proud playoff partner of your Columbus River Dragons. It's been over a dozen years, Columbus, but finally we can say it, baseball is back. The Columbus Chattahoots will call Golden Park home in 2021, and you can reserve your spot now for every home game this season with a season ticket membership. Visit GoHoots.com slash tickets to get started on picking your ideal seat to see the Hoots take the field in June. Members get all sorts of perks too, like merchandise savings, playoff ticket priority, and more. Full season packages start as low as 125 and are available at GoHoots.com slash tickets. GoHoots.com slash tickets. Dressing for success is as easy as one, two, three with Wade Cleaners. Drop off your garment at any one of their five convenient branches or call their valet manager to pick them up. Go do something fun. Walk your dog, eat a hot fudge sundae, or go to a movie. Leave the dirty laundry to them. Pick up your professionally cleaned garments or have them delivered at no additional charge to your home or office. Yes, you too can dress for success with Wade Cleaners. Oh, and uh, don't forget the little people as you move up in the world. The 501 Salon Experience is Columbus's most rejuvenating self-care center in town. We want you to be happy and satisfied with our services, and we do our very best to get it just right. Don't be shy. Give us a call at 706-940-0451, and our team will be happy to make you feel your very best. Each appointment at 501 Salon will provide you with personalized attention with a stylist of your choice. We look forward to your visit at 1238 Broadway in Columbus. It's time for River Dragons Hockey. Tonight's game is brought to you by Houston Clinic, Fort Benning Harley-Davidson, Burger King, West Georgia Oral and Facial Surgery, Victory Land Casino, Country Inn and Suites, Sun South, Interstate National Truck and Trailer, Chattabruchi Southern Brew House, Window World, and PNB Broadcasting. Now, let's start the game with the voice of River Dragons Hockey, Zach DeBozart. I'm Zach DeBozart, he's Scott Brand, and one more time, maybe this season, it's hockey time on the Chattahoochee River Dragons and Enforcers in Game 3 of the Ignite Cup Finals. Enforcers with their backs against the wall, River Dragons up 2-0 in this series, looking for the clinch, looking for the sweep. The Enforcers, they are dressed in the black jerseys with the neon green secondaries, black pants and helmets. They are going to go right to left across your TV screens and radio dials in the Sun South John Deere first period with Joe Young manning the pipes to our right. To our left, his counterpart, number one, Jared Rutledge and the River Dragons dressed in the reds. Sea Dragon logo on the chest, black helmets, secondaries and pants. They go left to right. Scott Brand, last chance to say anything prophetic before we get this puck down on the ice. You know what, uh, you, you think about these moments a lot when you're with a hockey club. All I wanna say is let's just drop the puck and let's get it done, Columbus. It's time to be champions and uh, thank you, Sun South. Let's be a John Deere and plow through all this. Zach DeBozart. Bring us home a championship, buddy. Here we go. Crowd is getting loud here in the Civic Center. You love to see it, a sold out crowd of 1,500. K 
Connor Fries, Carter Sincaric on the draw. We are underway here in Columbus. Gerard has this in his own zone. D to D across for Walters. Walters plays that off the body of a man. Fries left wing over for Fallis. Back for Fries. Fires deflected. Save made there by Joe Young. That was a close one. Bopped off of a body of an enforcer. And Joe Young had to make a save as he gloves that dump in. Absolutely. That's what we want to get the first shot on and make it make it a bouncy shot. Make it something he's got to work for. Put a little doubt in the back of his mind. Shin Carrick will drop this one for Girard, and he will send it back up ahead for him. Shin Carrick left wing circle with it, being bothered there by O'Brien, the double overtime hero from last Saturday. C.J. Stubbs tries to chip this one out. He takes a hit there from Essery. Fishing that one out of the corner is Fries. He's finished off by Shin Carrick. Now O'Brien muscles his way into the scrum and frees the puck up for Stubbs. Behind the net, it's Schultz trying to break this one out. Columbus with a touch pass out to the red line for Glenn Patterson. He plays for Elmira, though. That's a problem with that. One minute gone here in the first. Here's Johnny Ruiz, left wing circle in over the line. Spins it back at the corner. He's on the forehand now. Moving it behind the net. Tyler Jurich with it on the backhand. A pass up to the top. Right point. Bryce Martin skates it, walks it in a pad. Save made there by Rutledge. Seeing it from distance. And now here's Petrantonio with some speed. Petrantonio left wing over for Doe. Back for Petrantonio across. Jensen scores! Mac Jensen real quick. Columbus on top. 1-0. 18-40 to go in the first. If you want to look at great hockey, you watch three passes in a row. That's exactly what that line did. Wow. Jump on top. And this is the... the Roof is blown off this building, Zach. That's a huge goal, especially early in the game. Mac Jansen is fired up. He went and screamed something down at Rutledge, who screamed right back. One, nothing, Columbus, a minute and 20 seconds in, and it's been the offensive line that was a juggernaut up in Elmira. And for the first time tonight, let's hear from Brian Thomas. He shoots. So Petra Antonio and Doe pick up the assist. Icing call here against Columbus. While we were listening to Brian Thomas, Elmira picking where they want the faceoff to be. Mac Jansen, his third of the playoffs. And for me, Scott, more importantly, Josh Petrantonio, his FPHL playoff leading seventh point of the year on the assist. Absolutely, and it's so loud in here that they're having problems with the line changes. Uh, the officials are, and uh, you couldn't hear on the icing, but man, Josh is gonna be the guy that's gonna help carry us, and that's why we picked him up. Face off coming to the left of Rutledge. Elmira wins it, a shot from the right point. Misses well wide of the blocker hand. Matthews gets checked there along the half wall. Atkins loses it to Sargis in the corner. Slick move to get around him. Passes ahead to MJ Graham. And a pass left wing off the wall for Mangone. Trying to split the Elmira defense. Jumps around, Sargis shot kicked away by Joe Young. Sargis goes flying into the end boards, then picks himself back up quickly. Two on two battle in the near side corner. Beat Blake Peavy picking it out for Elmira. And here come the enforcers out of their own end. Peavy through the middle. He's got Atkins on the left. He fires one wide of the blocker hand on Rutledge. MJ Graham picks this one up on the near wall. Graham trying to poke it through. Girard was able to backpedal enough to cut off the pass. Now a backhand filter to the Elmira blue line. And JT Walters sends it down. No icing as they say a Columbus player could have touched it. Essery and Schultz collide. Gerard holds in left point, blocked by Schultz before it reached the netminder. Essery with the chance, too much traffic for it to get through to Jared Rutledge. This one cleared out here by Fries, and it'll be dumped down the length of the ice and icing on once again against the River Dragons. 17-24 left to go in the Sun South John Deere first period, and it's 1-0 Columbus. Smart play by Connor Fries. Really a defensive breakdown by the Dragons, their own zone, didn't have much to do, so go ahead and ice the puck. Take the safety play, and that's what he does. Now the Dragons can come back and regroup. Face off to the left of Rutledge. Shin Carrick v. Fries on this one. Centerman tie up sticks. It's loose in the dot, trying to push it to the middle. There was Gravel, and Columbus comes away with it. Here's Fries with some speed, chipping ahead to Fallis over the line, trying to go back to him, and Walters was able to kick that one away. Fries in the corner, checked hard there by Girard, and they both end up on top of the puck. Girard gets himself up, so too does Fries. Fallis finds the puck out of that. Walters pins him along the wall. Essery trying to scoop it out of skates. Fries also looking and playing Vulture. All this in the Elmira end in the far corner. Now Girard cuts off a man, that's Fries. Puck is free for Stubbs though. From behind the net, a pass to the right point, held in by O'Brien on the backhand. 
O'Brien still with it. Spinorama fires a shot, inadvertently blocked by Stubbs, and Elmira chips it out to safety. Brett Gravel has it on his tape. A pass across. Here's Shinkarik with some space. Can't get a puck to settle. Finally does. And a save made by Rutledge. And the crowd approves of that one. As we'll get a whistle coming up to his right. 16.36 to go in the first. And Scott, you couldn't have drawn the start up better. The goal a minute and 20 seconds in. Has this crowd lively and engaged? Yeah, this, there's no question about it. We've got a seventh man on the ice. O'Brien there got beat a little bit, Zach, but he used his speed and forced that shot to the outside. Really never a good opportunity to score there. Rutledge with the easy save. Doesn't matter that it's only 1,500 here in the Civic Center. This building is rocking right now. Brody Duncan from behind the net, sending that one out far wing, and here's Mac Jansen up ahead. Jansen trying to get around Martin, uses his speed. Jansen backhand to the middle. That one goes off an enforcer. It was Patterson, and he's able to corral it behind the net. Giving it up for Ruiz. He passes to the far wing, and now Jurich touches it ahead to Tucker, too far ahead. Brody Duncan slaps it away at his own blue line. Now Tucker's in over the line, and Duncan puts a big check onto him, and Columbus flicks the puck out to neutral ice. Ruiz dumps in, Rutledge slows it up, and both teams changing behind this, just over 16 to play here in the first. Yeah, nothing wrong with seeing the body start to fly. We can definitely play that style. Petra Antonio wanted to drop it back to Mangone. Mangone was driving the net. Here comes Elmira back the other way. Here's Peavy. Left point, getting that over for Jurich off the wall. Now to Tucker. Tucker tried to move it back to the point. Graham intercepted it and takes it back the other way. MJ Graham, left wing side, being watched by Matthews. He stops up in the corner. Graham with it at the hash marks, down low to Mangone. Mangone with it, Matthews watching over him. Cycle continues for Graham behind the net. MJ Graham thought about going out near side, trying to go far side, didn't have an angle he liked. Sarges with it, fakes going up to the top, moves it down farther in the corner and runs over Blake Peavy in the process. Elmira is able to come away with the puck though. And here comes Brandon Tucker in over the line. Elmira finishes a change behind this and Nick Mangone throws his body into Tucker and says, your shift is done. Schultz with it, far circle. He's turned over, backhand effort sent wide on the glove, hand of Rutledge and the net comes off as there is a collision at the side. 15.05 left to go here in the first still, one nothing Columbus. You're gonna need a line shift the way you're going. I mean, things are going fast and furious. Special shout out to St. Paul, Minnesota. I know uh, Ferris Frank is up there watching the game on YouTube and we wanna say hello to him and a couple others later. Zach, you got your breath caught because it's been pillar to post this whole, whole game. I'm having so much fun, Scott. How can you not? In a building like this with a cup in the house, face off coming to the left of Rutledge. Fries to take this one against Peavy. Fries will eventually win it with a second effort. O'Brien behind the net, lost it off his stick to the middle, and that was a good play by O'Day to knock away a passing lane. Fallis chipping that one off the glass. It goes over Walters' stick. Here's Stubbs with some space, but no speed, and Peavy was able to close him down. Fries from behind the net, bodied there by Girard. Now from behind the net, Stubbs picks it out. Fallis with it, left circle. Walters takes it off of his tape. It goes back behind the net, far side of the net. Fry's trying to pick it out of a scrum. It's a two-on-two -two battle over the right shoulder of Young. Walters trying to fish this one out. He pokes it through, and here's Gerard back. Connor Fries, JT Walters letting each other know they didn't like what happened in that scrum. Fries pushes back at him, and we're playing on. Here's Hussey, right wing circle. Backhand across. That one made its way through, and Gerard couldn't get a touch on it. Off the wall, Hussey playing that one to Leonard. Back to the right point, it's Patterson. He looks, fires, deflected by Shinkarik wide. Rutledge might have gotten a piece. O'Brien checks Shinkarik, the Elmira forward still with it. O'Day finds a pass, and he sends it to Fallis, who chips it the other way. Martin gloves this one down, left wing, he's in over the line. Martin stops it up here. Top of the left wing circle, at the point, to the middle. That one went through Essery's stick. Gravel with it on the far side wall. Cycled down into the corner for Essery and Preston Kugler's all over him. We'll talk about Kugler on the other side of the media timeout here, Scott. Here's Bryce Martin with it at the left point. Near side circle, goes off the stick of O'Brien and it'll be found by Doe, chipped ahead. Petra Antonio couldn't knock it out of the air. Elmira with some good control right now. Very good control, they had, a, they had two good shifts here, Zach. We gotta get some momentum, get it back. Pat Patterson with it, left wing corner. Cougar with a check, lost his stick. Martin right point, sends that one around. Patterson trying to come back in on it. Cougar trying to force it through him, he can't. O'Brien from behind the net, being whacked at by Essery. Here's Doe with it, he gets checked, but gets it into the path of Petra Antonio. Two on one if he hustles. Petra Antonio, left wing circle, spins it back for some support. Patterson puts a check onto him, and in the corner, Jansen will find it. Jansen to the top, Zemlichka, left point with it. Zemlichka, left circle, fires, deflect, save made Joe Young. Got that one in the glove, and we got a little bit of a hugging match going on in the slot. 
as the whistle will blow, and we'll get our first media timeout. 13 minutes left to go here in the first one nothing Columbus on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Spring is in the air, and Sun South John Deere has the equipment to get your chores done quickly, efficiently, and more affordably. With a full roster of riding mowers, utility vehicles, and tractors, Sun South offers something for everyone. Stop by and see us at 30 Parkman Avenue, Columbus, Georgia, or visit sunsouth.com to find the right equipment for you. Any budget, any project. Be sure to thank Sun South. Proud to be the preferred lawn and garden dealer of the Columbus River Dragons. At Southern States Bank, the Common Sense Bank, we're a true community bank that supports the places we serve. Our people live, work, and play in your community. And you will find us cheering for the River Dragons right alongside you in the stands. With convenient locations throughout Alabama and Georgia, we're never too far away to handle any of your financial concerns. Call, click, or come by and see how we can help you make sense out of your banking. Visit us online at southernstatesbank.net. Southern States Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender in MLS number 410611 back here at the Columbus Civic Center River Dragons one enforcers nothing 13 minutes to go here in the first Mac Jansen picked up the early one 120 into period one Petra Antonio and Doe the assist I'm Zach DeBozart, he's Scott Brand. What a start to this hockey game, Scott. It's been fast and furious. It's been a lot of fun. Special hello. I know they're listening in Canada. They're watching in Canada. Uh, Kevin and Tara are up there. He's probably having a nice cold Molson, you know, and, uh, and we appreciate all those listeners around the world. Brody Duncan fired a shot right off the faceoff. It went off of Jurich's stick. It's still in play in the right wing corner. That one shot straight up. Mangone got onto it first. He's bodied up by Matthews. Sarges with it right wing circle. Back into the, back into the half wall, and Mangone's shot is sticked away by Young, and we get a whistle as that one goes out of play. one nothing. River Dragons lead the enforcers. They lead in shots as well. 4-3 to three on the Swamp Fox Distilling Company shot counter. And of course, watching here in Columbus, Georgia on Bounce Television, thank you very much. Special hello, hello to, to Lee, Cody, and Kitty. They're watching tonight on the coach. Elmiro wins this draw. This one will be flipped out by Gino Mini. Gloved there by Jake Howley, and it'll be touched in a hand pass there as Sargis will go and grab it in the neutral zone. And this will be a defensive zone draw coming up here for Columbus. 12.35 left to go here in the first. So for those of you uh, new to hockey, you, you can pass the puck in your defensive zone, but it's got to stay within the defensive zone. If you hand pass the puck outside, it's a whistle. Talking about with your hands. With your hand. There you go. Faceoff will come to the left of Rutledge. Ruiz is in on this, trying to go against Sargis. Sargis will win it. Howie has it behind the net. Here's Graham up the near side wall. Matthews cuts that one off at the red line, and it gets sent back into the Columbus end, right there onto the stick of the River Dragons defenseman, Duncan. Duncan chips this one ahead. Here's Sargis with some speed. Sargis right wing side, in over the line. Fires one, and that one just high over the crossbar. Sargis is released there, Scott, real fast. And nobody can find. Oh, no one could find the puck. It was rolling on edge on the near side of the zone. That's twice tonight they've lost the puck. I don't know if they've lost it in the lights or, or, or where, but uh, it's uh, it's been found, and play will continue. 11.55 left to go here in the Sun South John Deere first period. one nothing. Columbus leads. Big check. They're lined up as Connor Fry's got to the path of Ruiz and stood him up. Here's Chase Fallis right wing, dropping it back. Stubbs fires to the middle, and Fry's had his stick canceled out there. JT Walters, good defensive play. Jurich dropped it back for him. He flips it, and Peavy will stick it over to Girard, who dumps it into the zone for Elmira. Good, uh, good offensive rush there by this line uh, uh, of Fallis and, and uh, Fry's and uh, Good back Sargis. check. Stubbs, excuse Stubbs, me. Good, sorry. Good back check there by Elmira as they are able to work it back into the zone. Schultz with a good poke check, though. Knocks that one away from Atkins. Zemlichka has this near side corner. He chips that one ahead. Jansen, the goal scorer, will just play it up ahead, and Girard tries to fish it back. Zemlichka has it at his own blue. Jansen from the red tries to send it in. Knocked away by Walters. And here's Elmira trying to create some momentum forward. Hussey on the backhand, sends this one around. O'Brien and Atkins collide in the far corner. This one will be found by Petra Antonio, but a weak pass cut off by Elmira. Left point, Patterson fires and offsides. 
as Glenn Patterson could not keep that puck on the blue. 10.52 to go in the first, one nothing Dragons. Scott, while we're in the mood for shout outs, how about we shout out Rochester, New York. Bert, he was listening in. In fact, they got a watch party going up there in Rochester for Jake Schultz. The Schultz family was able to make it into Elmira. Might have been the only River Dragons fans outside of the office bringing in there. So happy you guys are listening or watching in wherever you're at in Rochester. Schultz with this one, far side, excuse me, S3 with this one, far side circle, wrong number four. I was just talking about Schultz. Petra Antonio gets this one up off the glass, gets it back for himself, and now here's Jansen in the neutral zone. Jansen, right wing side, trying to go through Patterson, couldn't go through his legs, and Patterson hauled him down. Here's Gravel with some speed. Left wing side, he'll get in over the line. O'Brien, good stick in front of him to keep him at bay. Those two collide shoulders. Shin Carrick from behind the net, read by O'Brien. Dragons really got to work on getting some more offense right now. They've been kind of reacting to Elmira and not taking the plate to them. Petra Antonio flipped that one to the Elmira Blue. Columbus is in the midst of a change. 10-08 left to go here in the first. one nothing. River Dragons lead thanks to Mac Jansen. Patterson left circle, let one go. O'Brien was able to block it the whole way. Trying to leak it back to the right point. Sar just won a stick battle there on Ruiz. Mango knocked down by Patterson. No call coming. Crowd wanted one there. 9.50 to go here in the first. Send ahead and Mangone with a big check on Matthews. And there's another hit there from Graham. Freeze it up for Sargis. One on one. Patterson back. Sargis and a save made by Joe Young. And you see what some body checks can do right there, Scott. And now we're getting a little antsy in the side of the net as MJ Graham. I believe he is letting Kyler Matthews know. Those two fought back in game one. Matthews, and now cooler heads prevail. Matthews took exception to the check, to the check and he's two-handed him. Two-handed uh, our guy right in the back of the legs. No call. And it's, if you let that stuff go, it's going to build. It's going to build into a fight, which I don't think 1,500 people are going to be upset about. But you don't want to let that stuff go. Probably not. Face-off will come to the right of Young. Fries versus Peavy in on this one. Linesman will take an extra beat, get everyone set. Or excuse me, Atkins won that draw for Elmira, not Peavy. And uh, now Tucker will flip it out to center. Schultz will have this in his own zone, off the wall. Zimlichka retrieves and gets ahead for Stubbs. CJ Stubbs ahead, that one knocked away by Minnie, still in the zone for Columbus as Fries pushes it deeper into the corner. Stubbs takes a check, still has the puck between his skates. Fries picks it out from behind the net. He's bodied up. Stubbs now has it. Far side circle. Fallis to the left point. Zemlichka, and it's rimmed around for Fries behind the net. Fries backhand to the middle, and nobody home in a red jersey. Back the other way comes Elmira. Tucker will send that one in. Easy save for Rutledge, and he gloved that one off just as the referee blew his whistle. 8.59 to go in the first, and we get another media timeout. 1-0 River Dragons lead back in 60 seconds on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. When you're in the mood for a great home-cooked meal, you got to go to Cafe 431 in Phoenix City, located at 3211 Martin Luther King Parkway, right off the highway. It's a super fast, easy stop for some delicious grub with homemade soups made daily and a full all-day breakfast menu. There's always something for even the pickiest of eaters at Cafe 431. You can call in a to-go order at 334-291-1250. Again, that's 334-291-1250. Come in as a stranger and leave as a friend at Cafe 431 at the Country Inn and suites by Radisson, you'll enjoy comfortable accommodations close to Columbus State University, Fort Benning, and of course, the River Dragons games. Conveniently located at 1720 Fountain Court in Columbus, you'll be minutes away from all your favorite Columbus destinations. Free high-speed Wi-Fi and hot breakfast always available too. So whether you're staying for business or for pleasure, make your next stay in Columbus a comfortable one at the official hotel partner of the River Dragons. Country Inn and Suites by Radisson. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons lead 1-0 with 8.59 to go in the first. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Scott Brand. Happy you're joining in on the River Dragons Broadcast Network. Television tonight, WTVM Bounce 9.2, of course, on the YouTube page and on the radio network as well. Doe has this in the corner. Offensive zone possession for Columbus. Left circle, O'Day a chance. What a save, Joe Young, as he came way out of his crease to cut down the angle there on Matt O'Day. Scott, what a chance. That play started back in the Columbus end with a defensive zone draw, and in the span of about 15 seconds, a great A opportunity. Well, absolutely it was, and Joe Young comes out and has some uh, some 
Good words. I mean, listen, he made a smart play. And if I don't say something nice about the goalie, of course, the goalie union will be all over <laughs> me. So I love the goalie union. But what uh, a great play by that young man. And, and he is he is without a doubt, Joe Young, one of the better goalies in the league. Matt Torgerson, one of the goaltender aficionados of the FPHL. A shout out to you and the rest of the goaltenders union that Scott always gets on your nerves so much. Petro Antonio a blast. Glove save. Rebound loose in the slot. Backdoor. Score. Matt Jensen again. Bad turnover in front. Petri Antonio the blast. Young made the save, but the rebound coughed up and backdoor. Janney's got a pair. Wide open. Nothing Young can do about that. And you're right, it was a mistake. The Dragons capitalized on a mistake. Huge goal for the Dragons, and that's smart hockey. Is is we didn't panic. Tell you what, Elmira kind of had momentum going. Well, momentum's gone. 1,500 people are back in this hockey game, along with the Dragons up 2 nothing. 8.33 to go in the first. Here's Brian Thomas again. He shoots. He goes. The Dragons go once again by number 13, Matt Jensen. Assisted by number 9, Josh Pantonio, and number 17, Austin Doe. Carbon copy of the game's opening goal, Jansen from Petra Antonio and Doe at the 11:27 mark of the Sun South John Deere first period. Here's Gravel with this one in the corner to the middle. Essery and a save made by Rutledge. Had that one in the paraphernalia and Mangone chops at Essery for giving Rutledge one more at the end of that. 8.04 to go in the first. Actually, Essery stuck him in the face, and that's what he was mad about. Mangone thought he was cutting, he was skating around, kept holding his face there. He did not like the fact that Essery stuck him, and he stuck him back, and in playoff hockey, that's how you deal with stuff. 8.04 left to go here in the first. Two nothing, Dragons lead, a faceoff coming to the right of Rutledge. It's, I mean, listen, it's, you slash a guy, you slash him back, heave hole, let him go. It's playoff hockey. Let's have fun, boys. Here's Zemlichka with it behind the net. Defensive zone draw, won by Columbus. Fallis with it, left wing with a couple of options up front, but that pass was knocked away by Shinkerik, and now Gravel will have this right wing side. Gravel shot wide of the glove hand on Rutledge. 7.48 left to go here in the first. Dragons two, enforcers nothing, thanks to a pair of Mac Jansen goals. Schultz up ahead, Stubbs two on one if the River Dragons want it. Stubbs right circle, trying to pass across, ends up going on net and padded away by Joe Young. Fallis plays a couple of checks onto some enforcers. Near side the pass goes and it's found by Shinkerik. This one flipped out to center. Zemlichko will have it far side corner. He'll rim it around to the near and Jake Schultz has it here. Schultz too far ahead for Zemlichka. He'll race on it off the wall. He had Jurich bearing down on him. He'll dump it down and icing's the call. 7.14 left to go here in period one. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Columbus River Dragons radio network. Face off coming to the right of Rutledge. Schultz will move that one ahead and now CJ Stubbs right wing. Stubbs playing that one in and now behind the net it will go and be down ice it goes. No icing they say as Columbus could have touched that I guess Scott. Uh, maybe if he had a 40 foot stick he would have touched that but uh, we'll play on. Here's O'Brien with it on the far side circle. Now it'll be found by Petra Antonio. Petra Antonio from behind the net. O'Day gets bothered. Petra Antonio plays it ahead. Jansen, good read there on Tucker to tie up his stick. And here comes Columbus back the other way. Petra Antonio off the glass. Just missed a linesman as that one goes into the zone. Petra Antonio finishes off Walters with a big hit. Jansen from behind the net. Now it's gets back over. Behind the net, Jansen on hat trick watch. Poked away by Atkins. He'll recollect it far side wall. Girard tying up there with Doe. Puck goes free now for JT Walters. Behind the net, Walters skates this one up ahead. Into the neutral zone it goes. Walters back over for Girard, left wing side. Girard at the circle, trying to play that one to the middle. A shot from the right circle, save made by... Atkins from behind, now under the corner. O'Day's able to read it there. This one found, and now here's MJ Graham, left wing circle. Graham playing this one up ahead. Graham to himself, trying to go through the legs of Martin. Left wing corner with it. 5.50 to go in the first. Martin 
and able to poke the, chuck, poke the puck away from MJ Graham. Elmira tries to flip it out. Glove there by Howie, able to hold in for a moment, but now Elmira comes away with it. Now Hussey moving that one further in the neutral zone. Sargis picks it up, gets around a man. Sargis left circle, bodies off another, spins back in the corner, can't get around a third enforcer hauling in there. It was Martin. Now trying to pick it out there is Stubbs. Now this will go out in the neutral zone with 5.25 to go in the first. Yeah, I don't think people understand. Sargis is just a built individual. I mean, he's he's strong, and he just knocks bodies over. Tucker with this puck. Excuse me, Leonard with this puck in the neutral zone at the red line. 5.10 to go in the first. Glove there by Rutledge, and he gives it a bit of a pose, and the crowd appreciates that. Still 2-0 Dragons. Yeah, and... Uh, you just talked about the electricity here and how great it is. You know, we got to give a shout out to our home state of Michigan, Zach. I know your mom's watching. My mom's watching. A, a special hello to, to Ethan Wernick um, and the Mount Pleasant uh, Patriots. They finished second in the state, and uh, that's okay. They didn't win it, but uh, Mount Pleasant uh, Pee Wee's second in the state. Congratulations to them on a great year. Mount Pleasant, a uh, suburb of St. Louis, Michigan. Left circle, Kyler Matthews with this. It gets rimmed around. Gino Mini with it at the right point. From behind the net, Schultz ties up with a man. That'll free the puck for a moment up for Doe. Now oh. Schultz had it taken away from him. Gravel shot, save made, Rotledge. Yes. Huge save there from an acute angle and keeps it in the glove. Keeps this game 2-0 with 4.52 left to go here in the first. Yeah, mistake there by the defense, uh, Schultz, and uh, but Rutledge able to close the door, and that's the difference right now keeping them off the boards as Jared Rutledge is able to uh, atone for the mistakes made by his uh, defenseman. At the left point, Matthews shoots this one. Esri with it in the corner. Our apologies down the line on the radio network. Having some technical difficulties. We will work through them throughout this period. Stubbs comes in over the line. Fires left circle. Save made by Young. 435 now left to go in the first. River Dragons already with 10 shots in on the game. Now we're going to get some pushing and shoving. Someone got a little close to the goaltender in Elmira's eyes, and Connor Fries is being shoved at. Well, uh, uh, Carter uh, Shinnak punched Fries right in the side of the head. And, uh, and no call, so the officials have decided that we're going to let that happen, which is fine. We Listen, we don't mind playing a little bit of a disaster of a game here tonight, although I think we're we're probably better off when we uh, can play five on five. And Elmira just snuck in a, uh, a late line change on us. Quite a few fans by the Elmira bench letting them have it for sure as the intensity has ramped up in the building, Scott. That's the baseball team uh, at uh, Columbus High. Face-off coming to the right of Young. 4.35 left to go here in the first. 2-0 River Dragons on a couple of goals from Mac Jansen. Elmira slowing this game down. They don't like the pace at all. That's Ahmad Mafus who's not playing tonight in coaching. And uh, he's going to do this all night. They like to whine about the officials, and they, they do a good job of it. And the officials listen to him. Face-off coming to the right of Young. Petrantonio versus Ruiz on this one. Ruiz wins that one. Elmira trying to move it out of their own zone, and they do with Tucker. At the red line, Tucker flips that one out of play, but he was in the neutral zone. So we will get just a faceoff coming up, 428 remaining here in the opening frame. Jansen uh, finishing his check there along the near, near side wall. And, uh, you know, those are, that's how you, how you irritate the other team is you finish your checks, you make them clean, and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, that'll get under the skin of Elmira, too. They don't like to be hit. They don't mind throwing out the hits, but uh, not uh, fond of being hit. And we've got a little bit of a timeout here. I thought we had a door pop loose, but uh, they've got it fixed. And as we notice, the faceoff will come outside in the neutral zone. All right. Well, looks like we are back here on the radio network. Our apologies to those of you all throughout West Georgia and East Alabama. Mac Jansen shot. Save made young. Score! Austin Doe, 3-0, blows it through Joe Young. Joe Young wishes he has that one back. That's not a goal he normally gives up, Zach. And, uh, and you know what? We'll take it. That's a 3-0 lead. I think that changes the landscape of the game right now. You hope the Dragons don't drop back and play rope-a-dope. There's still 44 minutes of hockey left. 3-0 lead's a good lead to have, but you, by all means, do not let these enforcers back in this game. Well, we were about to let the radio audience know we were back and what you missed, but you caught it just in time. Three, nothing, River Dragons. Austin Doe, the goal. Here's Brian Thomas. (laughs) 
We get a whistle as MJ Graham was streaking into the right wing. Mangone was tied up, looks like, with Ruiz. Well, here's the problem is the inside linesman was waving it. He waved it. MJ Graham read the signal off that. Fire late shot, and the back linesman blew it off sides. So blame this gathering on the officials. I don't like to blame the officials, but you got one guy waving. You got one guy blowing. Next thing you know, you got a late shot. And Joe and, and the goaltender, Joe Young, he can take offense to that. But MJ Grand didn't know it. Four, four minutes even left to go here in the first. Three, nothing. Columbus leads. Two goals from Mac Jansen. One from Austin Doe. That whole line has nine points. The entire forwards have factored in each time. Petra Antonio, three assists. Doe, a goal and two assists. And Jansen, two goals, one assist. Yeah, I mean, what, what else do you say about that line? But keep her going, boys. Stubbs tied up with Ruiz. Ruiz fell down as he moved into the zone. Over on the far side corner, Howie has it. Lost by Tucker. Played to the middle, and now it finds its way to the near corner. Stubbs works it back farther. Brody Duncan behind his own net. He gets checked, and Sargis tries to flip it to center. It'll fall to earth right in front of Hussey there. Excuse me, Matthews. Matthews and Patterson play a little catch. Now Bryce Martin with it. Martin from the red line, left wing side. He spins it back at the circle. Martin to the middle. Nobody home in a black jersey. Peavy lost an edge, but was able to connect the pass. Right point shot blocked there by Fallis, and Bryce Martin able to come back as Steve Leonard was helping to cut him off. Chase Fallis does so many of the, uh, of the non-goal scoring things that you can do. He gets in the corner. He gets dirty. He blocks shots. He sticks up for his teammates. Chase Fallis, to me, is probably never going to be a leading scorer. What he is going to be, he's going to be a leader in the locker room, but his actions on the ice are going to be the leadership that we need. Faceoff coming to the left of Rutledge. Three nothing Dragons, 2.57 to go here in the first. Fries wins this one. Schultz off the glass, goes through Mini. Fallis racing after it here with Matthews. Fallis left circle, stopped up. Kyler Matthews ran him out of room. A pass knocked off of Matthews' stick, and now Peavy's tied up there with Fries. Matthews from behind the net, rims this one around. Schultz has it right wing circle. Down into the corner it goes. Fry's trying to push it along for Stubbs. Too weak on it, and Peavy plays it. Atkins around the boards. Here's Steve Leonard with some space ahead. What a diving play back. Chase Fallis, you just mentioned it, Scott. And Jake Schultz knocked into somebody, and there is a man down for Elmira. Stubbs back the other way. Stick save made Joe Young. Chance there for Fry's. It goes wide, and now we'll get the whistles. The enforcer player is still down. It's Steve Leonard. Yeah, they just collided in back of the play there, and Leonard's laying down. And now we've got the benches going at it. Mafus is screaming over at the Columbus bench, and the it was an innocent uh, it was an innocent bounce. And now Leonard's going to go challenge the bench. So Leonard letting the Columbus bench know he was unhappy with the hit. Well, keep your head up; you won't get hit. Linesman trying to keep him in. Leonard is animated. He is furious as he enters into the reserves of the Elmira bench. And we will get a whistle. The faceoff is going to come back in the Elmira end. That's where play was killed. 2.19 left to go here in the first. 3 nothing Dragons. We watched Elmira destroy themselves on, on Saturday. They get more focused on what they can't control than what they can control. Faceoff coming to the right of Young. Petra Antonio to take this one against Shinkarik. Tied up, and a whistle, and it was dropped unfairly. Shin Carrick gets waved. Leonard just threw his helmet. He is steaming on that Elmira bench. Gravel wins this one. Elmira trying to work it out. Walters a slap pass, hits Shin Carrick in the leg with it, and he'll dump it into the zone. Gravel tried to lay a check there on O'Brien, sent skyward. Petra Antonio trying to knock it off glass and out of the air, and Doe got tripped up by the blue line and ended up taking a couple of guys with him. And it looked like some bowling pins out there on the ice, Scott, the way they were toppled on each other. Nothing wrong with Gravel, that. Gravel, big check laid on there by Jansen, and Columbus flips this one back in. Joe Young gets the bouncer and plays it behind his own net. River Dragons with a wholesale change behind this. 143 left to go here in the first. Shin Carrick around a man. Howie gives him a chop. Pass to the middle. Gloved down by Essery. No hand pass. River Dragons touch it. Nell skated ahead. Here's Jake Howie with some speed. Left wing side. Got man going driving the net. Playing that into space, and nobody there 
there for it. Behind Mangone, too far ahead of Sargis. Not a great pass there, but Howie gets back and is able to check Shinkarik, frees up the puck for Sargis. Listen, there's no reason to get pretty. Nothing wrong with winning ugly. Sargis trying to go through a man that's Tucker. He's able to stick it out of the air. Jurich up for Ruiz, one-on-one -on -one back with Schultz. Ruiz left circle on the ice, easy save. Made there by Rutledge, and he covers that one up. 109 left to go in the first. Rutledge has made his ninth save of the game, Scott, and he looks comfortable back there right now. He looks very comfortable. Of course, he's got three of his biggest fans here in the building. His wife, uh, Shannon, who's our assistant GM, and of course, Sally, Sally. in the go. I almost said Sally's nickname, <laughs> and, and are, are in the building, and those are his dogs. And, uh, and, and You made a big deal about them being up in Elmira. A little easier probably here in Columbus, huh? Not have to take them on the road? Absolutely. Is that a Scott Brand mask behind me? I'm not sure. You can go ask at intermission. Schultz to Stubbs. A near side circle, he'll skate this one ahead. Stubbs gets around a man with less than a minute to go here in the Sun South John Deere first period. Stubbs with it in the corner. He's being checked by a man. At the hash mark, Stubbs loses the battle eventually to Martin, and Elmira will poke it out to center. Schultz with this at, their zone, at his own blue line. 44 seconds left to go here in the first. Enforcers, good stick lift. Martin there, gets it ahead for Tucker. Tucker in over the line, takes a check. Stubbs finds the loose one. Stubbs sending this one ahead into the path of Fries. He's got some space, but he can't settle the puck. Gets around Patterson, who puts a little bit of a hold onto him. Stubbs left circle with it. O'Brien looks, fires gloves, save Joe Young. Man, he comes out and cuts down the angle big time. Behind the net, Stubbs with it, goes through his legs, and Martin will find it for the enforcers. Yeah, good play by, again, Joe Young. Very good goaltender. Not getting a lot of help tonight, but he threw that... Uh Threw that glove out there and got a piece. There's under 10 seconds left. I think we're going to let this period run out. Yeah, River Dragons have this behind their own net. O'Brien going to just send this one off the glass. Down the ice it will go. And that does it for a very good 20 minutes here in game three at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons started early. Mac Jansen, 120 in, 11-27. He doubled his goal count. And then the 15-44 mark, it was Austin Doe. Three, nothing, River Dragons lead as they head into the locker room for the first time. Scott, your thoughts? I think it's. I think this is exactly the type of game we knew the River Dragons could play. They're playing it, and uh, another 40 minutes of hockey like this, and we'll be uh, we'll be having a couple of uh, Michelob Ultras at some point. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we will have the Fort Benning Harley Davidson first intermission report. It comes up after this on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Work. Are you looking to buy or you sell a house? Or you sell consider house? Team Bucklew with Showtime Realty for your full-service realty team. Serving the Columbus and Phoenix City areas. Call Jeff or Mary at 706-718-6413 or call the office at 706-536-4831. Again, that's Team Bucklew with Showtime Realty servicing the Columbus and Phoenix City areas. Call Jeff or Mary at 706-718-6413. Team Bucklew Realty is a proud playoff partner of your Columbus River Dragons. River Dragons. Spring is in the air, and Sun South John Deere has the equipment to get your chores done quickly, efficiently, and more affordably. With a full roster of riding mowers, utility vehicles, and tractors, Sun South offers something for everyone. Stop by and see us at 30 Parkman Avenue, Columbus, Georgia, or visit sunsouth.com to find the right equipment for you. Any budget, any project. Be sure to thank Sun South. Proud to be the preferred lawn and garden dealer of the Columbus River Dragons. The Outskirts Sports Bar and Grill is open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. It has an all-you-can-eat lunch buffet weekdays from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. for just $10, including a non-alcoholic beverage. Enjoy tacos every Tuesday with Taco Tuesdays. Comedy on Wednesdays beginning at 8 p.m. and karaoke on Friday nights. Plus, jam out with live music and a DJ every Saturday. And no matter the quarter, period, or inning, visit the Outskirts Sports Bar and Grill for the ultimate game time experience. 5736 Veterans Parkway in the old sports page building. Welcome to the Chattabrucci. That's right, the Chattabrucci Southern Brew House is the official post-game hangout of the Columbus River Dragons, serving their exclusive River Dragon Red Ale on all game nights, located just a mile and a half from the Civic Center at 1301 6th Avenue. There's no excuse not to get out with some friends and enjoy the night with some quality craft brews. Chattabrucci Southern Brew House is locally and veteran-owned and offers live music from 6 to 10 on Friday and Saturday nights. Make sure to follow them on social media for all the latest events. At Georgia Power, we believe our lake should be filled with water, not trash. That a healthy honeybee population will pollinate a healthier environment. That building homes is just as important as powering them. 
That's why we believe what we do off the grid is just as important as the clean, safe, reliable, affordable energy we provide on it. And that's a different kind of energy. Visit georgiapower.com slash community. Say hello to America's most loved pizza, Marco's Pizza. Made from fresh dough, an original sauce recipe, and three signature cheeses on every pizza. Besides great pizza, Marco's has their famous pizza bowls. And don't forget about mouth-watering subs and salads. Plus great sides like cheesy bread, chicken dippers, and big meaty wings. With a brand new location to serve you on Highway 431 in Phoenix City next to Renfro's, remember them for dine-in, carry-out, and delivery. Marco's caters events, too. Proud playoff partners of your river dragons welcome back into the columbus civic center everybody river dragons three enforcers nothing through 20 minutes of play i'm zach de bozart he's scott brand scott what a opening 20 minutes in front of a sold out have to put a little asterisk by it. It's only the 1500, but it's sold out. It's loud, and the building responded. The players responded on the ice, and it just kept feeding off itself, it seemed like. Yeah, and listen, we've been in here where there's been nights of over 2,500, 3,000 on our average nights, and it doesn't get this loud. Everybody is spread out all over the building, and I think that sound is going reverberating everywhere. And, Zach, it's become the seventh man. And, uh, you know, you jumped on top early. The, the Dragons came out, put the first puck in the net, and, and the place jumped behind us. We scored again, jumped behind us, and, and, and things kind of lulled a little bit. And uh, Brian Thomas has got the Let's Go Dragons going. Or, of course, fires them up again, and we score again, make it 3-0. So uh, the crowd, you can't say enough about the crowd. You can't say enough about how the game's going, but uh, what a great first period. Mac Jansen gets the opening two goals. The first one, 120 in, then about 11 or so minutes in, 2 nothing at that point. In the later stages of the first period, Austin Doe then got one through Joe Young. And what's interesting, Scott, is Jansen, Doe, and then Petra Antonio, they're all on a line. In Elmira, that line we thought was very good. Here, excellent, phenomenal. Choose your adjective. Each guy's got three points. Petra Antonio, three assists. Doe, a goal and two assists. Jansen, two goals and one apple. Nothing wrong with a little battle between goal scorers, so it's good to see. You know, and, and, and I thought the other line, uh, the Fallis and uh, and. Uh, uh, Fallis, is Fallis Stubbs, and Fries. Thank you. I thought that was one of our top lines. I'm wrong. That line right there. I mean, well, how, do, how do you how do you compare to? They've got all the points tonight, and uh, and they're playing well. Listen, the whole Dragons team's playing well. They have been for sure. Three nothing up through 20 minutes of play. Before we take a break, though, we got to address something, Scott. Your wardrobe choice. Uh, obviously, we usually have you, what, in the, uh, the suit and tie, but today we're rocking the black jersey, and that's because right now, fans, if you go onto the Dash app, D-A-S-H, you will see the black jerseys, the game set from the River Dragons are up for auction. There's also a few for raffle as well, and that event is going to go all the way through May 10th. We're on the Dash app now for all of our specialty jerseys, our auctions, all the different great merch we plan on giving away through the off season. so make sure you download the app now free on all android and ios devices and bid on one of these black jerseys the event ends on may 10th and if you don't want a black jersey right now there are two red jerseys up for raffle and our digital jersey off the back of course we had to do that all year scott as part of our COVID protocols they've been doing well and we want to get you involved josh petrantonio and mj graham's red jerseys are up I think that Petra Antonio red jersey is going to be pretty slick off the jersey off the back tonight. Don't you agree? Absolutely. And fans, uh, we want to apologize because I'm your model. I'm your COVID-19 <laughs> model. So it's been a tough we, year for all of us. We couldn't get the letter turner. What was her name? <laughs> Vanna White. We couldn't get Vanna White out here. So instead you got me. Great looking jerseys though. And uh, and uh, please go on and, and the dash and uh, and. Uh, and order your jersey. Again, Dash app, D-A-S-H, free on all Android and iOS devices. Let's take another break. When we come back, we have a look at the Southern Hockey scoreboard. We're getting down to the wire in the SPHL and in the NHL battles as well. We'll tell you about all of the teams we follow on there and continue to break down that last 20 minutes of play. River Dragons 3 enforces nothing. Don't go anywhere. The Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network.
your taxes are done. It's time to ride with Fort Benning Harley-Davidson. Bring in your tax return and we'll match it up to $1,500. Come check out our huge selection of pre-owned Harley-Davidsons. Find the one that's right for you and we'll reduce the price by the amount of your tax return up to $1,500. Let's see your accountant do that. Hurry in to Fort Benning Harley-Davidson, Williams Road in Columbus. Ride free because of the brave. FortBenningHD.com. If you're looking for quality dental work, look no further than Largeman Dental in Columbus, the River Dragon's trusted oral care provider. Largeman Dental provides cleaning services, restorative work, cosmetics, prosthetics, and Invisalign braces too. Dr. Largeman has over 19 years of clinical experiences in all phases of dentistry and holds memberships in four different esteemed dental societies. Set your next appointment by calling 706-322-6581 or visit them online at largemandental.com. Dressing for success is as easy as one, two, three with Wade Cleaners. Drop off your garment at any one of their five convenient branches or call their valet manager to pick them up. Go do something fun. Walk your dog, eat a hot fudge sundae, or go to a movie. Leave the dirty laundry to them. Pick up your professionally cleaned garments or have them delivered at no additional charge to your home or office. Yes, you too can dress for success with Wade Cleaners. Oh, and uh, don't forget the little people as you move up in the world. When you're in the mood for a great home-cooked meal, you got to go to Cafe 431 in Phoenix City, located at 3211 Martin Luther King Parkway, right off the highway. It's a super fast, easy stop for some delicious grub with homemade soups made daily and a full all-day breakfast menu. There's always something for even the pickiest of eaters at Cafe 431. You can call in a to-go order at 334-291-1250. Again, that's 334-291-1250. Come in as a stranger and leave as a friend at Cafe 431. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons three, Enforcers nothing. We're on game three of the Ignite Cup Finals. Two goals from Mac Jansen and one from Austin Doe give the River Dragons their lead so far. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Scott Brand. And Scott, now it's time to take a peek around the Southern Hockey scoreboard since uh, can't really do it around the FPHL. This is pretty much it this final weekend here for the league. And, man, what an exciting start, at least for the fans here in Columbus. Well, you can do one around here. It's 3 nothing in the uh, Dragons in the FPHL. So that's that wrap. But why don't you tell us what's going on in the Southern Pro Hockey League? All right, taking a peek over at the SPHL. We don't have any games starting just yet, we have got an 8.30 puck drop. Oh, we do have a game start. Excuse me. Macon is already up one nothing on Knoxville. They're through 20 minutes of play. And then we have a game 8.30 East, 7.30 Central. Huntsville is at Birmingham. That makes Pensacola your fifth wheel tonight in the SPHL. They're running out of games in the SPHL. They know their playoff situation, but they don't know the exact seeds yet. Macon's going to be the one seed, Knoxville the two, and Birmingham is out. Pensacola and Huntsville, though, are battling for the three, four seed and really the right to avoid Macon uh, in the first round, if you will. Huntsville, with a game in hand, is three points down of Pensacola. That means the Ice Flyers over their last two games on Saturday and Sunday against Birmingham and Huntsville, albeit on the road, control their own destiny. Well, I mean, that's what you want to do is be able to control your own destiny, so, so good for them. In the ECHL, we have some blowouts. South Carolina's up 3-0 on the Orlando Solar Bears in the second period, and that's just the first one. The second one, Jacksonville's up 6-0 in Greenville. Also in the second period there, the Florida Everblades uh, appear to be off tonight, but 3-0 and 6-0, Scott, for the road teams. Wow. Yeah, that's just, that's, you can't talk about bus leagues in that, and bus <laughs> leagues in that one. That's just. You know, uh, no. go out there and, uh, and, and take her to the home team. I don't think you can, that's for sure. In the NHL, none of the teams we typically follow on the Southern Hockey scoreboard are playing. Last night, the Florida Panthers beat the Chicago Blackhawks in overtime by a score of 4-3. to three. Carolina down Detroit 3-1. to one. And Tampa Bay defeated Dallas by a score of 3 to nothing. 
We take a peek at the Discover Central Division standings for the NHL. Carolina, Florida, and Tampa Bay, Scott, have all clinched their spots in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So there's one spot left, and boy, is it going to be a race. Nashville's on 56 points, but Dallas has a game in hand at 54, so that's going to be a race right down to the wire. Right now, Nashville with a tiebreaker, 19-16 to 16 in regulation or overtime wins. Or excuse me, 22-19 to 19 in regulation overtime wins. Don't count out Chicago, though. A game in hand on Nashville and six points back. If they go on a run in their last six games, they are certainly going to be formidable, too. Detroit and Columbus are already mathematically out. That is the Southern Hockey scoreboard. What's it like to be a Red Wings fan? It's been a tough one. Let me just tell it's you been that. been a tough decade. I'm, I'm, I'm happy the River Dragons are doing well, Scott. How about there you that? Go. Let's take a break. When we come back, uh, we have a look. Uh, we have a look back in at us as we get ready for the Wild Animal Safari second period. Don't go anywhere. We are back after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. With refined finishes and open concept spaces, each floor plan at Summer Lake Apartments brings you unparalleled luxury and comforts. Smith Station's most beloved apartment homes show a purely contemporary feel. And this beautiful community playfully highlights the lush grounds and serene fishing lake. Summer Lake Apartments boasts community amenities such as the resort-style swimming pool. Schedule a tour today at SummerLakeAPTS.com or give them a call at 334-298-1543. The Outskirts Sports Bar and Grill is open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. It has an all-you-can-eat lunch buffet weekdays from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. for just $10, including a non-alcoholic beverage. Enjoy tacos every Tuesday with Taco Tuesdays, comedy on Wednesdays beginning at 8 p.m., and karaoke on Friday nights. Plus, jam out with live music and a DJ every Saturday. And no matter the quarter, period, or inning, visit the Outskirts Sports Bar and Grill for the ultimate game time experience. 5736 Veterans Parkway in the old sports page building. Are you looking to buy or sell a house? Consider Team Buckaloo with Showtime Realty for your full-service realty team. Serving the Columbus and Phoenix City areas. Call Jeff or Mary at 706-718-6413 or call the office at 706-536-4831. Again, that's Team Buckaloo with Showtime Realty servicing the Columbus and Phoenix City areas. Call Jeff or Mary at 706-718-6413. Team Buckaloo Realty is a proud playoff partner of your Columbus River Dragons. Schaumburg Nutrition are proud to be supporting your Columbus River Dragons in the Ignite Cup playoffs. Located at 7600 Schaumburg Road in Columbus, stop in for breakfast or lunch and try one of their healthy and delicious meal replacement shakes and loaded teas that are packed with vitamins and energy. Open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, and 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday. They are there for you every day of the week. Give them a call at 762 822 1665. That's 762 822 1665. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center River Dragons. Three enforcers, zero. Scott Brand, I mean, as we get ready for the Wild Animal Safari second period, Elmira, if their backs weren't against the wall already coming down to Columbus, with 40 minutes left in their season as the score stands right now, it is put up or shut up, if you will. It definitely is. I mean, they're going to have to go out and prove a point that they want to be in the in the championship. I mean, listen, they played a strong first period. Don't take anything away from them. But, but the River Dragons capitalized on, on the mistakes. The River Dragons capitalized on some great passing. And let's hope the River Dragons, at least from our point of view, continue to capitalize. Nine shots on goal for Elmira in that first period. Not a bad total per se, but for my money, Jared Rutledge looks probably the most comfortable person in this arena. No shot seems to have really bothered him too much. River Dragons doing a good job clearing lanes in front of him, and he's been allowed to make some easy saves. Yeah, that goes out to the, to the defense. It goes out to the wingers doing their job. But you're right, Jared Rutledge looks so relaxed like he's been in this situation so many times before. It's just another game. Maybe to him it is. Listen, goalie's got a little bit loose up there, and uh, and uh, he. Uh, I'm glad he does because he does look very comfortable out there. You're not helping your status with the goalie. I, I, I know. I'm sure I'll get <laughs> written up. By the way, I'm nice that they moved the teleprompter in a better direction. Yeah, right, so, so you can check right there. Yeah. All right, let's take another break. When we come back, call the Wild Animal Safari second period next. Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network.
Do you own a home that needs an exterior tune-up? Window World is proud to take integrity to a new level with the best price, product, and warranty guarantee on windows, siding, doors, and more with professional installation. If you want the highest quality product at the lowest price, backed by a lifetime warranty, call or click Window World for your free, no-obligation in-home estimate today. Window World, simply the best for less. Call, click, or visit Window World today. Riding season is here, but don't put your bike on the road if it's not ready. Get it into Fort Benning Harley-Davidson for our fast lane service. Whether it's scheduled maintenance, an oil change, or a new set of tires, get it in by 11 and have it out by 5. Plus, we have free pickup and delivery. Get in the fast lane and keep your bike on the road with Fort Benning Harley-Davidson. Williams Road in Columbus. Ride free because of the brave. FortBenningHD.com. Storm Pros is the Chattahoochee Valley's trusted provider of residential roofing needs and solar panel work. With over a thousand satisfied customers to date and growing, they do everything from roof and gutter replacement, damage repair, and total restoration. And they can help you save on your energy bills with solar panel installation. Call 706-580-4110 in Columbus or 334-490-7838 in Auburn. Visit them online at wearestormpros.com. Storm Pros are proud playoff partners of the River Dragons. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons three, Enforcers nothing. I'm Zach DeBozart, he's Scott Brand. Boy, oh boy, what a first period that was. And now, Scott, your favorite period, the Wild Animal Safari second period. You know why it's my favorite period? Why is that? Because someone's gonna get slobbered on. Oh, well, the Elmira Enforcers need to hope it's them doing the slobbering. They're down three here in this do or die game for them. River Dragons in the red going right to left. Elmira in the black and neon green, left to right. Shin Carrick and Fries in on this draw. Linesman will take an extra beat as Shin Carrick gets in, and we are underway in the Wild Animal Let's Safari go, second go, period. Pine Mountain, George. Enforcers have this draw. Let's Gerard go, moving this one into the neutral zone, deflected off the stick of Fries. Down into the zone it goes, and Shin Carrick bodying up there with Zemlichka. Those two go at each other. Schultz pushes it out of the pile. Fall is tied up with Walters as he holds in for the Enforcers. Shin Carrick. Down in the corner, Schultz pinballs it back into that very same corner. Fry sends that off the wall. Stubbs pushes it in front of Walters, but Elmira is able to keep control. Gravel delayed off sides. No, he touched up, they say. And Schultz will have this behind his own net being bothered quickly there by Essery and a big check right there by the Framingham, Massachusetts native. Gravel, top of the right wing circle, blocked by Schultz. Gravel still with it, left point, down into the corner for Essery, back to the middle. Too many Columbus sticks to navigate there as it deflects away from its intended target. Now here comes Connor Fries up ahead with Stubbs on his left wing. Fries a shot, save made, Stubbs a rebound, kicked out by Joe Young. Stubbs was tied up by Martin there who probably saved a goal. Absolutely, first good scoring opportunity for either team. It's, it went to the Dragons, although I think Elmira came out and really took it to uh, uh, Columbus the first minute. Martin near side circle in his own end, looking to move this one up the near wall. Just in on sides is Brandon Tucker. Pass was too far for him though, and O'Day gives it back to his D partner, O'Brien. O'Brien on a backhand, sends to Jansen. Petra Antonio gave it a wave, can't chop it out of the air. Patterson can, has it back in his own blue. Pass for Ruiz, goes off of his skates. Columbus has it, can't get it out. Tucker through the middle, and Petra Antonio doing a good job lifting the stick and being a nuisance there to prevent an opportunity for the enforcers. Very good stick work there. Here is Patterson. Left wing side, he'll play that one into the zone. He's in on the rush himself. He'll check O'Brien as those two go at it in the corner. That's defenseman on defenseman there. Whole bunch of troops come in and help out. A three-on-three -three battle. Weird hop off of the kick plate, and it goes out in a neutral ice, splitting the Elmira defense. Gino Mini back in on sides. O'Day gives him a good check. Into the corner it goes. It's behind Jansen. Tucker feeds it to the far circle at the top. Matthews could not get a stick on it. It clashes, and O'Brien sends it down the ice. Won't have the legs for icing. 17.43 to go in the second. Yeah, either. 
other team really able to connect on passes. Good stick, good defensive play, and now we got an offside. Offsides as Gino Mini brings that in from the right wing. 17.39 to go in period two. Columbus three, enforcers nothing. All of the damage done for Columbus in the first period and done by one line, that Jansen, Doe, and Petrantonio unit. Yep, it's gotten a little quiet in here, uh, so the, 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 the crowd not having much effect right now. I think we're all kind of just getting back, having our hot dogs and our, and our, our cold ones kind of waiting for uh, for something to, to pick up. Peavy will win this one. Elmira dumps it in, and Brody Duncan will have it behind his own net. Man going with it, near side circle, skating away from Leonard as he tries to pick up some speed. Chipped ahead, MJ Graham continues it going. Man going with space, right circle, fires just wide of the blocker hand as Young was reaching for that one. Leonard crunches Duncan as he holds in left point, but it holds. Now here's Atkins with it. He chips out to center, right into the path of Peavy. Leonard with it at the left point, stops up, passing it across. Matthews fires one, blocked by Garrett Sarges, clogging up the shooting lane. Here's MJ Graham off the wall. He takes a hit, and Gino Mini has it in front of the Columbus bench. Mitch Atkins softly puts it into the River Dragons end, and now Sargis will flip it to center. Glove down by Matthews. That would have been a hand pass. And Goen got a touch on it, and Graham baseballs it into the into the zone. Yeah, Leonard and uh, and Graham behind play were going at each other. Now this is a good keep in for a moment there by Fallis, and now taken off his stick by Shinkarik. Left circle, a shot blocked in front by Schultz. Here's C.J. Stubbs. Oh, what a stick handle around one. Now a cross-ice pass. He hits Fries right on the tape. Fries left circle, drops it back. Schultz a blast. And there was a deflection, and it hits the glass and ends up going into the netting as well. Out of play. Jake Schultz, he let one rip. That's probably one of the fastest shots we've seen off of his stick this season. Yeah, obviously it hit a uh, Elmira player's stick. Uh, it's a good thing because that would have hurt. If, uh, if that would have made it all the way through the net. 16.28 left to go here in the Wild Animal Safari second period. River Dragons three, Enforcers nothing. Faceoff coming to the left of Joe Young. Shin Carrick to take this draw against Fries. It goes off of the half wall, far side. Stubbs in a battle there with Walters. Puck goes free, Fallis a shot, stick save made by Young. Behind the net, Fallis picks it out of a scrum. Stubbs deflects it, held in right point by Schultz. Back down into the corner for Fallis. JT Walters puts a stick onto his back as those two collide. Fallis then loses his edge. Walters goes down as well. Backhand effort. Save made Young trying to go back on that far post. And Columbus just could not put it in. Zemlichka left point. This one gets rimmed around. Ooh, that hit the kick plate weird, but it'll fall for Girard as in the middle of a change of the River Dragons. Yeah, Dragons able to make a change there on the late off sides. 15.50 left to go here in the middle frame. That pass hops over Shinkarik's stick, so Gerard will get it right back, put it down into the corner. Fries knocking it away there, and here's O'Day moving it ahead. Left wing, that one through the stick of Doe. Mac Jansen with some speed ahead. Jansen, left wing corner, checked by Martin, dodges a man, held up there for a moment by Jurich, and now Tyler Jurich will find the puck. Can't get it out as it hits Petrantonio on the feet, eventually leaks all the way to the Columbus Blue. And it'll be played by O'Day, but Ruiz couldn't touch that puck in the delayed offsides position. 15-18 now left to go here in the Wild Animal Safari second period. Jansen filters it through. Petra Antonio with some speed, right circle. And Johnny Ruiz, what a back check right there. Took away the River Dragons' captain stick at the right time. Probably one of the most underrated players. O'Brien right point, a stick save made there by Young. That was his magic spot over in game two. And a penalty coming up here against Columbus as Bryce Martin is taken down in the corner. And it looks like it's going to be Mac Jansen, the guilty party, with five minutes gone in the second period. It's the first man advantage of the game, and it belongs to Elmira. Yeah, Jansen reached in, tried to get that puck, and unfortunately corkscrewed uh, the Elmira player, and he'll go to the box for two minutes. We'll get an opportunity uh, to work on our penalty kill. Jansen, two minutes for, was it tripping the call, Scott? Tripping. Yep, didn't see the signal there. Tripping the signal. And a faceoff to the left of Rutledge. Houston Clinic penalty kill on for the first time tonight for the Dragons. Houston Clinic helping the River Dragons get back to full strength. Tied up in between the centermen. Ruiz eventually wins it back, and Matthews' pass was offline. Couldn't even keep it along the blue paint, and Jurich has to go back in the neutral zone to retrieve it. Now Ruiz off the boards, far side for Tucker. He collects, and Elmira is set up. Jurich, left circle, fires one. Save made, Rutledge, rebound, trying to go back door, and Sargis knocked it away before Ruiz could find it. In the far side corner, Tyler Matthews with it at the right point. Matthews down to Ruiz, bottom of the circles, a one-touch pass, could not feed Tucker, and Patterson is upset with himself as he slams the end boards and heads off for a change. Yeah, Elmira just passed himself uh, the puck right out of the zone for us, but still a nice job by the Dragons. 
Zach, you're doing a nice job of work keeping the box going. 115 left to go in the Jansen minor for the Houston Clinic penalty kill. Leonard with it right wing circle. He plays it around the net. That one goes through Schultz. Jurich holds in at the left point. Too far behind the net for Leonard. Gravel will now have it, right wing circle. Down into the corner for Leonard. He tries to move it along the forehand. Zemlichka bodying up him. Drop back for Gravel to the middle. That was a good sliding play there to block it away by Fries. Martin holds in, goes D to D with Jurich. Now back for Martin, right point. Down to the right wing circle, Gravel. Martin across, Jurich, left circle. Couldn't pull the trigger, he had to double clutch. Follis was sliding to block. Jurich an effort off the crossbar and sent high, still in play. Gravel with it right wing circle. 35 seconds left to go here in the man advantage for the enforcers. Martin for Gravel, top of the right wing circle. Looking for a shooting lane, nothing there. Ooh, almost dragged it out of the zone himself. Gravel back for Martin, a blast. Wide of the blocker hand, springy backboards and Schultz clears that danger. Right side circle, Gravel still with it. A pass off a of Columbus body. Jurich and Schultz, they collide there. Leonard's able to pick it out of that scrum. Gino Mini on a sandwich hit there. He knocks away, looks like that's Zemlichka. And now Elmira still with it. In the corner, near side, Gravel up the wall. Martin right point, fires a couple of tips and a save made Rutledge and Zemlichka and Leonard chopping at each other. Oh, and Leonard just got bodied. Coming across like a linebacker, that's Connor Fries. And Scott, I think he got his two minutes worth. Yeah, absolutely did. I can't believe they're not gonna give Leonard something for this. You know what? I'll take that play. Stick up for your guys, even though it's gonna put you down on a five on three for a little bit. It's only three seconds. But uh, you know what? Go ahead and bury him. Leonard's acting like a jerk. He deserved that. Jansen, three seconds left on his penalty. And Connor Fries. Two minutes for roughing, or I guess in the spirit of the NFL draft going on right now, unnecessary roughness, if you will. Ah, the guy deserved it. 15 yards and an automatic first down. Faceoff will come in the Columbus zone. Elmira picking where they want. It looks like they're going to go to this near side by our vantage point. That'll be to Rutledge's left. Two minutes up on the board against Fries. It is a five on three for three seconds. And Jansen will be out of the box. Then that's a danger for Elmira. They're able to get it to him. He's already buried twice in this one. Yep. Petra Antonio v. Shinkarik on the draw. False start, and Shinkarik's going to get waved. So Gravel will come in to take this draw. Five on three, Houston Clinic penalty kill. Houston Clinic helping the River Dragons get back to full strength. Gravel, the right point to Martin. Jansen's out of the box. Five on four now for a little over a minute 50. Back to the center point for Martin. Right circle, Gravel with it here. Gravel doesn't like the shooting lane. It's being blocked right now by Mangone, check that, that's O'Day. Right point, here's Martin with it. Martin fires one, save made by Rutledge, seeing it through some traffic. Jurich holds in along the far wall, Patterson continues it around, and O'Day can't send it out, right point held by Martin again, his shot deflected, Jurich back door, ran out of real estate and couldn't find an angle. Petra Antonio just held that in on the near side glass. Can't get it out. Martin again holding the right point. Now here's Jansen with some speed. Petra Antonio going with him. Jansen, right wing, in over the line. Stops up. What a sliding play, Bryce Martin. Oh, that just saved a shorthanded opportunity as Mac Jansen's on hat trick watch. Yeah, give, give uh, Martin uh, credit. That was a heck of a defensive play. Here's Shin Carrick in over the line, right wing circle. He'll rim that one around from behind the net. Kyler Matthews, left point for Jurich. He'll put one to the middle. Stick save made by Rutledge, dealing with Patterson in front, and that one will hit the netting and go out of play. 11.57 to go here in period two. 55 seconds remaining in the Fries minor. Still 3-0 Dragons thanks to the PK. Well, yeah, and, uh, and uh, Columbus has basically killed a uh, three minutes of a, of a power play two in a row here. Doing a nice job, again, working the box and having Elmira just throw the puck. They're not even passing it. They're throwing the puck. Face off to the right of Rutledge. It's won by Columbus and trying to send it out, but held in right point by Matthews along the wall. Gino Mini with it in the corner. How he puts a hit onto him. Oh, yeah. Now here's Duncan with it behind the net. Duncan tying up there with Tucker. Howie again will put a check, and Minnie didn't like that. He sends it back at him. Howie can't get it out. Matthews center point, back to the left wing circle, looking, firing a shot. That one blocked, getting a good job. Sliding down there is Mangone, and down the ice it goes for Columbus. 25 seconds left in the kill. I don't understand how Gino Minnie's allowed to cross-check our defenseman in the back. 
in the offensive zone, Here's particularly when they're short-handed. Leonard near side, he carries this one into the neutral zone. Sargis all over him on the back check. Elmira not clean on this entry, and Sargis takes it away. What hustle, and he sends it down. This is gonna go into the path of Stubbs. Stubbs is in on a breakaway. Backhand save made there by Young. Stubbs had to be quick, he was running out of space. Yeah, and, and he's out of gas. Too. Here's Fries out of the box. Sarge is trying to come in over the line. Stubbs with it right circle. Pass across. Oh, and Young might have gotten a stick to it. Fries wrap. He scores. Cutter Fries out of the box. Out of the board. Four and nothing. Fight. And we got Leonard trying to go in with Stubbs. Oh, it's all sorts of pandemonium as it's four nothing Columbus. They're letting him go. Stubbs and Leonard just tackle each other down and everybody's all of a sudden picking a dance partner. Listen, Leonard's a dirt ball. That's the hockey guys, though, giving Connor Fries the thumbs up right there for protecting his man. Now Leonard wants to go after Fallis. Leonard should be thrown out of this game. He's done nothing but run around and cause stuff the entire game. 10.50 left to go here in the second, and the River Dragons have made it 4 nothing. Connor Fries on the wraparound, and boy, oh boy, Scott, you can tell this crowd's starting to taste it. And we should go on the power play right now. Leonard jumped them after the after the goal. So let's see what we get out of this. 10.50 to go in period two. Connor Fries, his second of the playoffs, 14th overall this season. And, 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 and Coach is upset. Boom Boom's upset. He has the right to be. They're letting Elmira run all over us just because we got the lead. Five That's on, not right. Five on five is the on-ice advantage right now. So it looks like this will just be five for fighting each. Scott, let's all take a breath here. and Let's listen to Brian Thomas. He shoots. Stubbs and Sargis pick up the assist on the Fries goal at the 9-10 mark of the second period. Doe gloves one down, and he gets a pass across the right wing side. In with some speed is Jansen. He gets around a man. He's free behind the net. Jansen walks it out in a blocker save made by Young, having to hold on to his post tight there. Here's Hussey in the neutral zone. He comes away with it. Left wing side, a pass into the near corner, and Mitch Atkins is immediately bodied up by a River Dragons defenseman. Picking that one out of feet, it is O'Brien. O'Brien looking to move it, but there's four Elmira defensemen playing a good job on the zone. Jansen lifts the stick, he's still with it in the corner. Gerard, ooh, he ends up running right through his numbers. Jansen is underneath this puck, and are we gonna get a whistle out of this? Martin's trying to find it, and now he eventually will get a whistle, and Mangone gonna shove it Gerard, not too happy with the hit administered. 9.49 to go in the second, media timeout. 60 seconds and we're back, Columbus four, Elmira nothing on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Network. I want a vacation of the wild kind Wild animal safari is what I have in mind Feed the monkeys, camels, emus and what to see too Here comes one He's got a slobber on you Get your wild life on Wild animal safari Get your wild life on Wild animal safari Wild animal safari so Get your wild life on Wild animal safari Get your wild life on Wild animal safari an injury can be a game changer. That's why Houston Sports Medicine Team provides urgent ortho care, Saturday morning injury clinics during hockey season, and an emergency room at Jack Houston Memorial Hospital. An injury can be a game changer, and immediate evaluation and care can be a game changer too. For more information, go to Houston.com or call 706-324-6661. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. Faceoff coming to the left of Joe Young. It is 4-0 River Dragons here in game three of the Ignite Cup Finals. Howie at the red line, knocks off of the body of Shinkarik on the outlet, and Gravel holds this one in. Pass to Esri, right circle. What a block there, Jake Howie in front. Howie and Esri, they collide behind the net. Puck goes free for Sarges, and he'll backhand flip that one out to center. 
Martin with it at his own blue line. Gravel, a one touch to Shinkarik. He's into the zone, but nobody's in on that four check for Elmira. Duncan plays it ahead. Here's a three on two for the River Dragons. Right wing side, in over the line, looking for some space. It's Sargis. He'll spin back, not once, but twice. And at the left point, takes a hit from Essary, holds in again, and Gravel will eventually hit him. And Sargis has lost a glove out of all this, it looks like. Now here's Patterson. He gets dispossessed, and Fallis flips it to center. Gravel gives it back to the Elmira defense and Gino Mini, 8.57 to go in period two. Yeah, let's let's not get too uh, fancy-pantsy here. We still got uh, still got over uh, just under half a game to play. We're going to have an icing here, though. Yeah, Mini sends that ahead. Icing the call as Zemlichka wins the race to the dots. Let's you know that fans, River Dragons hockey all season long, is brought to you by the Master Barbers, an old-school barbershop, 1041 First Avenue in downtown Columbus. All the guys getting their game day looks sharpened up at the Old School Barbershop, and you should too. Call ahead for an appointment at 706-321-5930, 706-321-5930. Fries with it, Schultz a shot right off the draw, and that one goes wide of the blocker hand on Young. 8.40 left to go here in the second. Dragons lead by four, and what is a clinching game right now for them? Essary from the red line sends it in. Rutledge will glove it there. And this, Scott, is where we would take a media timeout, but because that was flipped in from the wrong side of the red, but it was on net for Rutledge, this means the Columbus bench actually gets held here. Yeah, another stupid rule that we put in that nobody voted on. Face I don't understand the purpose of this rule. Face-off coming to the left of Rutledge, so we'll keep it right actually, here for a moment. It's to make the goalie play it. If anybody had any common hockey sense there, they'd know Rutledge isn't playing that bouncing puck. Ruiz will take this draw against Fries, Ruiz wins it, Jurich a shot blocked by Schultz. Zemlichka pushes that over and Mangone from the red line will send it into the zone. Near side corner, Mini and Fallis combine on this over the near circle in the Elmira and now Ruiz knocked down by Mangone in the back check and here's O'Brien with some speed ahead. O'Brien gets through one man, Fries to the middle, glove there by Joe Young and now we will get our media timeout. 8-12 left to go in the second. 60 seconds and we're back on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Sports Bar and Grill is open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. It has an all-you-can-eat lunch buffet weekdays from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. for just $10, including a non-alcoholic beverage. Enjoy tacos every Tuesday with Taco Tuesdays, comedy on Wednesdays beginning at 8 p.m., and karaoke on Friday nights. Plus, jam out with live music and a DJ every Saturday. And no matter the quarter, period, or inning, visit the Outskirts Sports Bar and Grill for the ultimate game time experience. 5736 Veterans Parkway in the old Sports Page building. Do you own a home that needs an exterior tune-up? Window World is proud to take integrity to a new level with the best price, product, and warranty guaranteed on windows, siding, doors, and more with professional installation. If you want the highest quality product at the lowest price, backed by a lifetime warranty, call or click Window World for your free, no-obligation in-home estimate today. Window World, simply the best for less. Call, click, or visit Window World today. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. 4 nothing River Dragons with 8-12 left to go here in the second. Connor Fries, the only goal of this middle frame back at the 9-10 mark. That's how we sit thanks to first period goals. Two from Mac Jansen and one from Austin Doe. Face off to the left of Young. Petra Antonio wins it. Kugler a blast. Save made there by Joe Young. Gives us a chance to talk about Kugler, Scott. We meant to. Drawing into the lineup, Jay Krupp dealing with an upper body injury. Could not go in this one. So Boom Boom opts for the seven defenseman route. And I think Matt O'Day might be playing some emergency 10th forward role here. Yeah, and O'Day a chance to play forward. But Kugler, hey, listen, give this young man every uh, all the props you can because he, uh, he stepped up when he was asked to. Here's Doe holding that in left point. Now Petra Antonio flips it down deeper. Matthews rims this one around for Elmira. Jurich tied up with Petra Antonio. It goes out in the neutral zone. Columbus has to touch up here on a delayed off signs. 7.50 to go here in period two. Elmira still looking for the back of the net. It is 4-0 River Dragons in game three. O'Brien with this puck. 
It gets away from him, but then he'll get it right back as he got it in front of Geno Mini. O'Brien on the backhand. Walters chips that one through. Nobody in an Elmira jersey was ready for it, though. O'Day sending that one ahead, trying to get to Matt Graham. And JT Walters knocks it down with the body. Sarge's good pickpocket there. He comes back into the zone. Sarge's right circle. Drops it for MJ Graham. Across. Score! Garrett Sarge's tips that one into the top corner. 5 nothing Columbus. You know, you talk about ugly goals. That's not an ugly goal. That's a pretty goal. That's... That's stuff you practice it and you, you practice to kind of be cutesy about it. And, uh, and and what an amazing play. What an amazing pickpocket. And uh, just a quick tap in. Great play by Andre Graham, too. Garrett Sargis. Nice tap there for the Midlothian, Illinois native. His first goal of these playoffs had an assist earlier on. It's 5 nothing, Dragon Scott. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of surprised Joe Young's still in the net for Elmira. But first, here's Brian Thomas. Oh, come on. Oh, that was a knockdown in front, man. Gone. And no penalty coming up. You just heard it. MJ Graham picks up the only assist. Dumped down ice here by the River Dragons. Icing is going to be on with 6.51 remaining in period two. Sarges from Graham at the 12.41 mark of the second period. And Scott, why don't you tell us about this? Because we are starting to get a lot of congregation heading back to the Columbus end. JT Walters just kicked the skates out from underneath the Dragon just sitting there. That was Mangone. Mangone. Referees refuse to call it. They're calling the scoreboard. They're going to absolutely lose control of this hockey game when you let that stuff go. 5 nothing. Neither team's got much to lose at this point. It could get ugly. Faceoff coming to the left of Rutledge. That was a cheap shot by Walters. PV to take this one against Fries. Not surprising, though. Fries will win this one. Howie from behind his own net. Uh oh, Duncan lost an edge. Hussey and Fries are tied up, and Columbus is able to work it out. Here's Mangone with some speed ahead. Three on three as he hits the line. Firing one just wide of the glove hand on Young. I don't think he saw that one right away, Scott. No, he's starting to struggle a little bit. He's not getting a lot of help. Mangone. And there's a tackle in the corner. Mangone and Girard are in a wrestling match right now. They're still going at it. Fallis dumps his man. That's Hussey. Two on two. No DQ cage match right now in the corner, Scott. Absolutely. I mean, all we need is Vince McMahon here or Hulk Hogan to come out. I don't know why the referee's refusing to call penalties. Nobody had pinned anyone. I don't know why there's any whistle being blown, Scott. Could at least. I, I think we got a one count there. <laughs> and this is going to get the uh, 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 River Dragons bench upset. Right now, all of Elmira players are sitting down. The River Dragons, though, they are not going to take take lightly, kindly to this. And listen, if people want to start throwing hands, we can throw hands. Jansen heads off to the locker room. Looks like a skate issue as he was looking down at his feet. We'll update you on his progress, hopefully later on in this period. Faceoff will come to the right of Joe Young. Petra Antonio to take it against Shin Carrick. 6.19 to go in the Wild Animal Safari second period. 5 nothing Columbus and Shin Carrick going to get waved out of this dot. False start right there, Scott. Well, at least we're throwing guys out of the... Face off. Now the puck is down. Gravel will win it into the corner. Martin slams it off the glass. Found by Schultz. He'll take his time. Play it off the near boards. Finds Doe. Austin Doe in with some space. Stick tied up. Still with it. Left wing circle. Spins it back. Looking for a pass across. Drops it back. Petra Antonio. Gloves save Young. He could not hold on to it though. And the rebound chopped by Elmira's Mark Essery. Not out though. Zemlichka. Good job pinching. Second effort. Enforcers get it out. Young with 27 shots on him is starting to struggle now. Here's Essery, left wing corner with a check there by Graham. Essery trying to get around Zemlichka. Good check by him, frees the puck. Petra Antonio can't get it out. Right point held by Bryce Martin. His drive, and that one blocked there by Jake Schultz before it could reach Rutledge. Down the ice it goes. Bryce Martin will have it. Uh-oh, that's a turnover. MJ Graham, he's with it on sides. Graham, left wing circle, a pass across. Petra Antonio, he fires one, deflected, and that one goes up into the netting and out of play. 5.27 left to go in the second, and we get our fighters returning, C.J. Stubbs and Steve Leonard. That was a long time ago, Scott. It was in there. They're not going to let him out of the box because the uh, linesmen haven't come on over to escort him. Somebody needs to. So I don't think you just want to wave him out. The one linesman, see, yeah, come on out. I think you probably want to get between these two. 
Because someone's going to take a run at Leonard. Well, and we might. do have a goalie switch, I think. Uh, or no? No, I think Joe Young just went to the uh, to the bench. In fact, the goalies thought it was, was a media timeout. timeout. Yeah. So the goalies right to the benches, and then now we'll head back to their respective crease. A faceoff coming to the left of Joe Young, 5 nothing Columbus. Of course, you're not say, allowed to say anything bad about goaltenders. You get, you know, chastised. And you can get the union mad. We already know, Scott. They're a little, you know, goalies are different. Let's just say they're different. Sargis wins this draw clean. Kugler, right point, faked the shot, now rims it around. Behind the net, Kyler Matthews gave it a wave. Columbus gets on the end of it, though. Here's Sargis with it in the corner, trying to get away from Ruiz. A pass to the middle. Kicked there by Mango and off the stick of Matthews. A good bit of soccer skills right there from Mango. Now trying to move this down into the corner further is Sargis. It goes through Mangone, and Matthews on the far wall, able to push it up, not out. Right point held in. Good pass on the tape of Mangone. Drops back. Sargis a drive. Save made. Joe Young. Man, Sargis can let one go from the top of the slot, and Joe Young just was able to shrug that off and keep it and the body to get a whistle. 4.57 now left to go in period two. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Columbus River Dragons radio network. Face off coming to the right of Young. 4.57 left in period two. Joe Young has just beat down. I mean, he, he, that shot hurt. He's not getting help tonight. He, this young man deserves a little bit more. Fries will get waved out of this draw. Fallis is going to come in instead. Fallis wins it away from PV. Howie, left point, works it for Fallis, left wing circle. Rimmed around the boards. Fries checked there by Girard. Those two going at it. It's tied up in the feet. PV did a flyby. Girard was able to muscle it away. Gerard near side circle on the backhand flip puts it right onto the tape of Atkins now over for Leonard big hit behind the play Leonard shot blockered away by Rutledge first one he's seen in quite a while Scott now here's PV to the middle that one loose Gerard what a save Rutledge loose in the slot Gerard let it go with an open cage looking at him and Rutledge gets back ranging to his right keeps it out so that's only the 13 shots Elmira has Rutledge has every right to be asleep at this point Point blank, scoring opportunity, he just robbed him. Four. Police are going to show up uh, with a warrant for his arrest. He keeps making saves like that. 4.29 left to go here in the second. 5 nothing Dragons. And, man, Rutledge just looks like such a good goaltender right now, especially off that highlight reel save. And I'm going to tell you what, it, it's, it's, it just just it just sends a, 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 a no-win situation for Elmire. The whole bench, their bench is sitting down. What do they have to do to, to find Jerry Rutledge's weak? Leonard, left point, over for Walters, rims around, Duncan in a battle there with Atkins. Those two fall down. River Dragons come away with it. Referee inadvertently gets into the scrum. Stubbs works it out, a pass left wing side to Fallis. Fallis in over the line, reaching for it. Stubbs knocked away from him. Stubbs trying to pull it back from Leonard. It'll fall for an Elmira stick. Gerard lifted, falls to the near wing. Leonard gives it back to the defense, and Stubbs puts a big hit onto him, and Leonard gave him a stick right back. Fries asking Leonard if he wants it. Leonard pulling him back. He's with the shove now, and nothing going on. Now Fries collects a pass. Left wing side, Gerard watching on him. Gerard would cross check there into Fries' back, holds onto the puck. Here's Stubbs with it, left wing circle. Stubbs operating with some space, being boxed there by Atkins. A pass to the middle is read by Shinkarik. 3.38 left to go here in period two. Shinkarik drops it back. Essary a drive. Save made. Rutledge gets that one in the glove and gives a little how do you do to the enforcer. Buzz on the tower on the way. 5 nothing. Dragons it remains. An offensive zone draw coming for Elmira. Listen, you never want to embarrass your opponent, but if Elmira is going to continue to go out here and the officials are going to do absolutely nothing about it, at some point it's going to explode. Leonard two-handed, our guy again, skating away after a clean check. When is enough going to be enough? Because at some point, hockey players, that's why you have fights, fans, because hockey players will, will control the game themselves. Face-off coming to the left of Rutledge. Shin Carrick to take this one against Petra Antonio. Shin Carrick wins it clean. Martin, right point. Ooh, he whiffed on it there. Ended up dropping it back for Gravel. His shot, easy save by Rutledge. Saw that one the whole way. It's got that one. That's more on the defense right there. Clearing a lane, Rutledge saw it through. Absolutely. I mean, he was able to see it. It was an easy shot, just a wrist shot. And I don't know if, if Martin intentionally uh, uh, fanned on it or actually was some kind of drop pass. The game Bryce Martin has had, I know Elmira's down five, but Bryce Martin, I think, has been the best enforcer on the ice as he's got the puck again, right point. 
Now at the circles, Gravel lost it. MJ Graham, big check right there by Martin. And again, Bryce Martin, say what you will about Elmira down five. He's easily been their best player. Absolutely he has. He's a good defenseman. He's very, very stay at home and does a nice job. Essery tripped over the red line, but is able to get a pass across now for Gravel. Gravel at the right point, left circle. Shinkarik reached back, and then Schultz colliding with his stick, colliding with his body, and then sends it all the way around. Martin holds in at the top of the right wing circle. He's bodied there by Graham. Essery trying to fish it out. Zemlichka with it there. Sends it along its way and on the far corner. Schultz will find it here. Schultz dodges a check there from Essery. MJ Graham finds a loose one. And here he comes into the neutral zone. A pass left wing side. Petra Antonio playing that one to Graham. And offsides is the call. As Graham couldn't keep his feet on the blue. 2.42 left to go here in the Wild Animal Safari second period. Dragons five, enforcers nothing. Goals in this period for Connor Fries and Garrett Sargis. Not sure how intelligent it is for Esri to take a run at uh, at Schultz. Schultz is what, uh, eight feet nine or something like that <laughs> on skates? On skates, right, <laughs> of course. He's got some real big skates. Yeah, yeah, Scott. Actually, he's, he's over six. I think he's what, 6'3? Uh, on off skates, off skates, he's over 6'3. Yeah. I know that for sure. This one tied up at the red line. Mini forces it into the zone for Elmira. Ruiz's shot ramped up off the stick of Kugler. And this one is held in along the glass. And Tucker plays it down low. Matthews with it left point. Matthews firing. Save made. Rutledge standing atop his crease. Caught that one right on the chest. You got nervous there for a second, Scott, because everyone seemed to stop thinking that one went out of play. And Kyler Matthews looking for a shooting lane. Rutledge was still alert to it. Absolutely. And, you know, the Dragons are just doing smart things, you know. Kugler had his guy tied up, had the stick between his legs, didn't let him to go out and get a rebound. That's just smart defense there. And for him to be able to miss the first two games and come out here and, and not miss an assignment uh, so far has been just amazing. Face off coming to the right of Rutledge. Tied up, but the linesman did not drop. It'll be Ruiz against Fries. Fries takes his time getting back in. Fries will win it, and Kugler sends it around the boards. Tucker has it near corner. Back for Jurch to the middle. Sticked away by Rutledge. Good active read right there. Columbus netminder, he's just on right now. Absolutely, it's all Rutledge tonight. O'Brien dropped it back. Nobody there, and Stubbs finishes off Tucker. Back at the Columbus blue line. Fries will collect it. Here's Stubbs over the red line. Ruiz able to interrupt a pass. This one tipped into the zone by Fries into the body of Minnie. He sends it back into neutral territory. Kugler, one touch. Fries give and go with, with Fallis. Fallis, right wing circle along the goal line. A drive. Minnie blocked that as he was trying to pass it to the middle to find Connor Fries. Left point. Howie can't hold that one in. Fallis with it from the red line. Howie will dump it in, and Columbus starts up a change. 90 seconds to go in the second. Yep, Columbus uh, gets a good change here, and the last thing you want to do is uh, give up anything late, particularly with, with momentum on your side here, so they're going to allow the, the clock to wind down as quick as possible. Here's Johnny Ruiz from the red line. He'll send this one in. Brody Duncan from behind his own net, plays it off the near side glass. O'Day gets on the end of it. He's playing forward up on this shift. O'Day left circle just wide of the glove hand on Joe Young. Elmira will take it back. Here's Tyler Jurich over his own blue. Good tape to tape pass as Hussey sends it into the zone. One minute left to go in the Wild Animal Safari second period. It's been all River Dragons through the opening 39 plus. O'Day flips this one into the zone. Young will leave it there for Walters. Columbus with another change, 45 seconds left to go. Glove down here, Sargis couldn't touch it, he would have been offside. Sargis will find it as Hussey can't control the puck. He'll drop it back, Schultz in over the line. Doe running a bit of interference. Schultz with it right circle, giving it back. Sargis a blast, glove save, and this one held in the trapper of Joe Young. 29.8 left to go in period two. Dragons are still buzzing, Scott. They are not letting the foot off the gas pedal, 5-0. No, in a championship game, you're up two games to none, 5-0 league. The last thing you can do is start thinking about the fat lady showing up to sing. You got to keep here, and you're right, just keep the, uh, the, the foot on the gas pedal. Face-off coming to the left of Joe Young. MJ Graham to take it against Shin Carrick. Patterson. Bottom of the circles, can't get it out. Schultz holds in right point. He lets one go. Ramped up off a stick and goes wide. Patterson along the far wall. Petra Antonio finds it with some space behind the net. He's trying to box out a man. Now he drops it back on the cycle. Doing a good job cutting it off there. Bryce Martin, he'll send it down ice. And 
and it will be no icing as it hits a dirty patch and doesn't get over the goal line. Zemlichka rims it over for Schultz, five seconds left. Schultz on the backhand to neutral ice and Petra Antonio slows it up and that will do it for 40 minutes and this crowd with an ovation right now for their River Dragons. A five spot through 40 minutes and 20 minutes away from hoisting that Ignite Cup. Scott, what a period. Absolutely, a, a, a great period and the Dragons are doing everything right. And you don't, I mean, now the superstitions come in. You don't say a lot of things. You just say it's 5 nothing. We got 20 minutes to go, boys. And let's just keep, don't worry about the officials that aren't getting involved in the game. Don't worry about Elmira running, guys. Just worry about 20 minutes of hockey. All right, 5 nothing. River Dragons lead. Let's take a break. When we come back, we have the Swamp Fox Distilling Company second intermission report after this on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. I want a vacation of the wild kind Wild animals, safari is what I have in mind Feed the monkeys, camels, emus, I want to see two Here comes one He's got a slobber on you Get your wild life on Wild animals At the Country Inn and Suites by Radisson, you'll enjoy comfortable accommodations close to Columbus State University, Fort Benning, and of course, the River Dragons games. Conveniently located at 1720 Fountain Court in Columbus, you'll be minutes away from all your favorite Columbus destinations. Free high-speed Wi-Fi and hot breakfast always available too. So whether you're staying for business or for pleasure, make your next stay in Columbus a comfortable one at the official hotel partner of the River Dragons. Country Inn and Suites by Radisson. Discover power in the palm of your hand with the MyDPI mobile app, a secure and convenient way to report, manage, and pay your diverse power bills 24 hours a day, seven days a week. With instant access to account information, real-time outage reporting, and the ability to schedule alerts and reminders at your fingertips, managing your home's energy usage has never been easier. Available for Apple and Android devices. Diverse power the powerful difference. Your favorite BK menu items are now buy one, get one for a dollar at Columbus area Burger King restaurants. You can get the Whopper, original chicken sandwich, chicken fries, big fish sandwich, or the impossible Whopper for a dollar with purchase of another featured item. Use the BK app to order and you can get your faves delivered to your door for a $1 delivery fee. Offer also available by ordering at BK.com. Schuster Enterprises and Burger King are proud playoff partners of your Columbus. Columbus River Dragons. An injury can be a game changer. That's why Houston Sports Medicine Team provides urgent ortho care, Saturday morning injury clinics during hockey season, and an emergency room at Jack Houston Memorial Hospital. An injury can be a game changer, and immediate evaluation and care can be a game changer too. For more information, go to Houston.com or call 706-324-6661. Say hello to America's most loved pizza, Marco's Pizza. Made from fresh dough, an original sauce recipe, and three signature cheeses on every pizza. Besides great pizza, Marco's has their famous pizza bowls. And don't forget about mouth-watering subs and salads. Plus great sides like cheesy bread, chicken dippers, and big meaty wings. With a brand new location to serve you on Highway 431 in Phoenix City next to Renfro's, remember them for dine-in, carry-out, and delivery. Marco's caters events, too. Proud playoff partners of your River Dragons. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons, five. Elmira, zero. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Scott Brand. Scott, I mean, wow. This Don't is say not, anything to jinx us. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what we expected 40 minutes in, but obviously the River Dragons faithful are ecstatic about it. Listen, we got a sellout crowd here as much as we can sell out. 1,500 tickets gone. There might be 15, 1,502 in here, actually. Uh -oh. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, nothing's over yet. Uh, you got 20 minutes of hard hockey. The Dragons, though, are playing all cylinders. Jared Rutledge, 
What do you say about it? I mean, he's been phenomenal. 16 enforcer shots. He stopped all seven. He saw in that second period. That one, that period, he was a little more uncomfortable, or as uncomfortable maybe as he's looked all night. The Alexi Girard yeah, shot. Work. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was about it. Otherwise, again, the River Dragons defense, you have to give them so much credit for clearing the way, letting them see all these shots. And then Rutledge, I mean, he's just been steady as they come since these playoffs started. I mean, really, you think about it, and back in Elmira, the only time he let up goals is when it was a goal bonanza, five-goal period in game one first and game two second. And so far, other than those periods, brilliant, phenomenal, and perfect. Absolutely, he's been, he's been perfect. You know, uh, and, and as, as we get cleaned up here after the Chaka puck, and, and uh, I do want to say one thing, Zach, and, and how about the condition that the ice is in? And I take my hat off to Rob uh, Landers, who runs the building, for the fact of working with us, getting the playoffs going, number one. Number two, the ice crew here. You never talk about ice crews. Elmira ice crew had to work hard to, to get the ice back playable. And we here give them the a lot of credit And for we it. do. Here, the ice has never been any doubt. So so kudos to the city employees, the city of, city of Columbus, and, and great job keeping the ice going here. Thank you very much for allowing us to play hockey, too. River Dragons are two for two on the Houston Clinic penalty kill. Remember, that was about a 350-ish straight uh, power play situation for Elmira because Connor Fries took two minutes when Mac Jansen still had about three seconds left to go uh, in his minor penalty. So it was a minor five on three for a little bit. A long time of power play. And, I mean, you just look for times where Elmira could have been had a chance to break into this game that had to have been the biggest one. Absolutely it was. I mean, it started with an innocent trip in the corner to put us down to. Connor Fries, then the officials quit calling penalties on Elmira. Connor Fries sticks for his teammate. I think it was a smart penalty to take, Zach. Was it, was it a tough one to put us down? Absolutely. But Connor Fries comes out of the box, wraps it around, puts the puck in the net. That's what we call the hockey gods yeah. uh, doing, a, doing a number. He took a smart penalty. Or one that uh, sticks up for his teammate, and then he gets a goal. Jerome Bichard always says, we'll kill off every hitting penalty, every stick up for your teammate penalty, and by golly, they did so right there, and were able to cash in. That counter fries goal back at the 9-10 mark of the Wild Animal Safari second period. 12-41 mark then, it was Garrett Sarges. Great centering feed from MJ Graham. That's how we sit at 5-0 with 20 minutes of regulation hockey left to go. Scott? We want to talk about your wardrobe one more time? We do. We do. Vanna White's not here, so I'm Vanna White. <laughs> on the Dash app, D-A-S-H, Dash app, free on all Android and iOS devices. That's where we're doing all of our specialty jersey auctions and raffles. All right, now hold on a second. You need to, you need to really keep the space here. It's a tight frame, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but these black jerseys, the game set that the River Dragons wore throughout the season is on auction and on raffle right now on the Dash app. Again, free on all Android and iOS devices. The event is running through May 10th. It's our first season-end auction and raffle of the year, so get your bids in now. Find your favorite player and make sure you take home their game worn from this 2021 season. There's a couple up there for raffle as well, too, if you're feeling lucky in that regard. Also, Scott, jerseys off the back from tonight's game. We talked about Josh Betre Antonio with his three assists. He's up, as is MJ Graham, who had a nice feed on that Garrett Sargis goal. And again, all of these are on the Dash app right now. D-A-S-H, free on all Android and iOS devices. Thank you for your modeling. We will not be asking you for a callback. I'm sorry. That, that, <laughs> that hurts right here. And by the way, that Graham jersey, I wouldn't be surprised if it got a little... Uh, little blood on it tonight because he's uh, he's not happy with what Myers doing because I can see him <laughs> throwing the uh, gloves down on Zach before I forget. What do you think is going through the mind of Jerome Boom Bouchard, legend here in Columbus? He's Mr. Hockey in Columbus. He's 20 minutes away from being able to win a, a, a championship as a, as a river dragon. It's very exciting. 5 nothing right now. Columbus leads. Let's take another break. When we come back, we have a look around the Southern Hockey scoreboard. SPHL and NHL, they are running down. So we will tell you all about the games going on there and what their standings look like after this. Don't go anywhere on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Most loved pizza, Marco's Pizza, made from fresh dough, an original sauce recipe, and three signature cheeses on every pizza. Besides great pizza, Marco's has their famous pizza bowls. And don't forget about mouth-watering subs and salads, plus great sides like cheesy bread, chicken dippers, and big meaty wings. With a brand new location to serve you on Highway 431 in Phoenix City next to Renfro's, remember them for dine-in, carry-out, and delivery. Marco's caters events, too. Proud playoff partners of your River Dragons. 
For all your equipment rental needs, you need River City Equipment in Columbus. Everything from bulldozers, mini excavators, skid steers, and more are available for rent at 329th Street. Call them today at 706-536-8417 and ask about their commercial financing. Be sure to give them a like on Facebook, too, for any upcoming equipment and rental sales they're having. They also have a team specializing in equipment restoration, too. River City Equipment is a proud playoff partner of your Columbus River Dragons. At Southern States Bank, the Common Sense Bank, we're a true community bank that supports the places we serve. Our people live, work, and play in your community. And you will find us cheering for the River Dragons right alongside you in the stands. With convenient locations throughout Alabama and Georgia, we're never too far away to handle any of your financial concerns. Call, click, or come by and see how we can help you make sense out of your banking. Visit us online at southernstatesbank.net. Southern States Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. NMLS number 410611. The Humane Society of Harris County and Hamilton is envisioning a safe, healthy, and enriching environment for the people and animals of their community. They are a no-kill shelter seeking to place deserving animals in loving homes in the area. Can adopt but want to help? The Humane Society of Harris County is always looking for volunteers to help in all sorts of roles. From animal care to office work, your time will do a world of good towards their mission. Call them at 706-582-3007. Dr. Weiss and the Humane Society of Harris County are proud partners of the River Dragons. We are back here at Columbus Civic Center. Five nothing, River Dragons lead as the intermission clock counts down and we follow the Zamboni up and down the ice. This will allow us to go on the Southern Hockey scoreboard and take a look at games going on all around the South. In the SPHL, Macon leads 2-1 over the Knoxville Ice Bears, 18-30 left to go in the third period. Excuse me, that was the wrong button to hit there. 2-1, uh, making leads in the early stages of the third period. That right now is the one versus two matchup. They do have those seeds locked in. This is actually the Knoxville Ice Bears season finale. And so they're locked into the two, making locked into the one. A lot of people pegging that for the SPHL championship. Pensacola and Huntsville battling for the three seed. They'll have something to say about it from seeds three and four. Birmingham's also up 1-0 on Huntsville through 20 minutes of play. Makes Pensacola your fifth wheel here tonight. Boy, the blowouts have continued in the ECHL. South Carolina now up 6-1 in the early stages of the third period against Orlando, and Jacksonville has added another 7-1 up over the Greenville Swamp Rapids. And there are a ton of blowouts, but those ones are from road teams here today in the Civic Center. That is from a home team. No teams we follow in action today on the Southern Hockey Scoreboard. Tomorrow we've got action starting at 3 o'clock. Tampa Bay is at Detroit. Then Columbus is at Carolina for a 7 o'clock puck drop. And looking a little deeper, Florida is at Chicago. 8 o'clock puck drop. Dallas is at Nashville. Also an 8 o'clock puck drop from Bridgestone. That's 7 o'clock Central for those of you who might be listening in in the Central Time Zone. Taking a look at those Discover Central standings in the NHL, Carolina, Florida, and Tampa Bay have all clinched their spot in the Stanley Cup playoffs with more than 70 points each. Tampa Bay 70 points on 50 games, Florida 71 on 52, and Carolina right now your Central Division leaders, 73 points on 50 games played. Nashville holding on to the fourth and final playoff spot as it stands, but Dallas two games back, two points back with a game in hand. Chicago six points back also with a game in hand on the Predators. Let's go ahead and take another break. When we come back, Scott Brand will be back here with us, and we can get ready for the Victory Land third period. It's going to be a fun one. River Dragons five and forces nothing. Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. At Texas Roadhouse, we're famous for our hand-cut steaks, fall-off-the-bone ribs, made-from-scratch sides, ice-cold beer, and our irresistible fresh-baked bread. We take great care in everything we prepare, serve with big smiles at a great value. Visit us at 2970 North Lake Parkway in Columbus or call Ahead Seating at 706-323-6616. Curbside takeout available, too. We're proud to be your hometown favorite and are always focused on providing legendary food and legendary service. Texas Roadhouse. An injury can be a game changer. That's why Houston Sports Medicine Team provides urgent ortho care, Saturday morning injury clinics during hockey season, 
and an emergency room at Jack Houston Memorial Hospital. An injury can be a game changer, and immediate evaluation and care can be a game changer too. For more information, go to Houston.com or call 706-324-6661. The benefits of a Kinetic membership extend far beyond convenient banking solutions, competitive rates, and financial advice. Kinetic Credit Union focuses on the unique needs of our members while supporting and improving their lives. At Kinetic Credit Union, they recognize that your financial goals are unique. That's why we're offering the Smart Steps Financial Education Program, a personalized learning experience to help you plan around your individual financial situation and aspirations. Kinetic Credit Union. Let Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security. No worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons five enforcers nothing as the Zamboni is making its final laps here at the Civic Center for what obviously we hope and the score line seems to indicate the final time this season. Can Elmira get anything going right now because they have Mount Everest to climb to keep their season alive in the victory land third period, Scott? Let's hope not. Wow. I mean, listen, I'm not going to be, <laughs> I'm a homer. We're, we we want to win this thing at home. We'd be so blessed to do it on our ice, particularly tonight. You, you know, Zach, the question becomes, what does the third period look like? Game's not over by any means. Teams have scored five goals in, 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 in a game. In fact, I think if Elmira gets gets three goals here and, and they got still got you know at least four minutes to go in a game, I think you got a totally new hockey game at that point. Now we're playing desperate. I mean, do you feel like Elmira right now is just looking for one and then they're going to take any momentum they can? Because, I mean, when you're down five, 20 minutes, you're talking about a goal every four minutes. And, I mean, while it doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world, quickly that four minutes becomes three, becomes two, and the clock really is your enemy. It absolutely is, and they're going to have to react. They're going to have to do something big. They're going to have to create traffic, which means they're going to wind up bumping Jared. Uh, our, our goaltender, and, and uh, we can't allow it to happen, but the biggest thing is we got to continue to play our game, Zach, and that's what it's all about. All right, let's go ahead, take a break. When we come back, puck drop on the victory land third period. 20 minutes away from potentially seeing the Ignite Cup here on Columbus Civic Center Ice. Don't go anywhere on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. If you oh, can beat, we can surgeons, help. Mark's At Athletic Wiki. Training Rooms International, we believe your team deserves the benefit of practitioners for a competitive advantage in injury management services. It's why the River Dragons trust them as a playoff partner in the Ignite Cup playoffs. Visit them at atrisportsmed.com or stop in at their location on First Avenue in Columbus. Open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. The personalized and professional care you and your team deserve are just a visit away at Athletic Training Rooms International. For a creative, fine dining experience in downtown Columbus, look no further than Stock Market Dueling Kitchens. A fresh spin on surf and turf, offering only the highest quality ingredients to get the best out of the stockyard and the fish market. They're located at 1232 Broadway in Columbus, just minutes from the Civic Center. Reservations encouraged and can be made by calling 706-507-3530. Open for dinner seven days a week and serving lunch on weekends. Stock Market Dueling Kitchens is a go-to destination in Columbus. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons five, enforcers nothing as the clock hits zeros. And we are almost ready to drop puck here on the victory land third period. Jared Rutledge tends the pipes to our left. He has stopped all 16 enforcers shots. 
he has seen in this one. Over to our right, it's Joe Young, 20 saves on 25 shots. River Dragons in the red, they go left to right. Enforcers in the black and neon green, they go right to left. I'm Zach DeBozart, he's Scott Brand. Here we go, Scott, 20 minutes away. And it's the Victory Land third period. Ladies Victory Land fans. Here's Stubbs in the neutral zone. Flips that one in from the red line. That'll be gloved away by Joe Young. Had to reach out a little bit to grab it. And he will get a whistle. 1947 now left to go here in period three. Dragons five, Enforcers nothing. And, and you mentioned it in the uh, in the intermission there is, uh, is every time that clock tips down, it's just more pressure on Elmira. Uh, for Elmira, that clock is going 100 miles an hour. For the River Dragons, it's going slow. Face-off coming to the left of Young. Elmira will win it. Fallis gets tied up there with a the man. Fries checks Gravel, or excuse me, Shinkarik. It's still in the feet. Now Stubbs finds it. He rings the outside of the post on Young, who is holding on. Here's Schultz with this left wing circle. Excuse me, that's O'Brien. O'Brien dropping it back. Fries with it behind the net. Fries with it, near side corner, trying to play it back up to the top. He gets tied up with Girard. Fallis picks it out of feet. He's with it. Right wing circle. That one goes through Schultz. And he will have to collect it back out in neutral ice. Essary with it. Right wing side. He'll fire one. Blocked by Schultz. And behind the net it goes. Gravel with a push there on to Fallis. Rimmed around. Schultz will have it here for the River Dragons. One minute already gone here in the victory land. Third period. It remains 5-0. Here's Martin through the middle. Left wing circle. Martin spins it back to Shinkarik. He fires a shot. Ooh, that was blocked by Fries. And that one stung him a bit. Down into the corner it goes. Gravel, body check there by Schultz. Trying to fish it out there is Fallis, and Patterson will hold in at the left point. Rimmed around, Doe has it here. Doe with it on the far side wall. Tried to connect on a pass to Jansen. Went off the heel of his stick. Schultz will gain the red, and he'll shoot that one down right wing. And the Dragons being a little bit defensive here. Uh, Elmira uh, knows that they're in trouble, and they got to score goals. Elmira skating right to left across your screens and radio dials in the victory land third period. Jurich jumps it in. Tucker trying to play it back to the point. Enforcers D were in the middle of a change and couldn't get back. Now Columbus will respond with a change of their own. Yeah, Columbus doesn't have a sense of urgency, Zach. You're just watching that clock boil down and keep going lower. Kyler Matthews gives it up on the handoff with some speed ahead. It's Ruiz. Oh, wow. Shoot it. No save made by Rutledge. And the rebound went all the way to the near circle. Rutledge didn't realize it. Sarge's good job knocking away a pass on a centering attempt. Here's MJ Graham, left wing. Graham skating this one to the middle. Tucker knocked it away. O'Day a blast and a pad save made by Joe Young. Jurich trying to chip this one out. It's held up by the body. Sarges left circle trying to look for a shooting lane and there was nothing there. Down into the corner. MJ Graham lost it off the kick plate. Jurich will softly dump that one down. O'Brien racing after this one. Icing is the call against the enforcers with 17-26 remaining in period three. So a faceoff comes in deep to the uh, the right of Joe Young. Joe Young facing 26, actually 31 shots. He's made 25 saves. Oh, they just changed it back. So 30 shots, stopping 25. Uh, but uh, Jared Rutledge, a uh, little bit of a, a hiccup there. Faceoff coming to the left of Young. But still holds on for the save. Petra Antonio V. Ruiz on this one. It'll go off the body of Doe, so no icing. It was on net anyways, and Rutledge gives it up to Duncan. Duncan, Fermac, Jansen, sending it into the zone. Austin Doe with it, right circle. Couldn't get around JT Walters, and Walters gave him a pretty good chop at the end of that one. Peavy, near side boards for Girard. He'll skate it into the zone, left wing. Girard, left circle, looking for a drop back. Nothing available to him there. He still has it on his stick. Girard trying to go down into the corner. Duncan, well-placed stick there to ramp it up. Can't get it out, though. Right point, Walters. Pad save made. Rutledge on the deflection in front. Petra Antonio near side corner with it. 16.48 left to go here in period three. Petra Antonio being chopped at a bit, still with a puck on his stick as he moves it to the right wing. Now this one bounced in on Young. He blockers it away, and Columbus in a wholesale change. Yeah, Columbus right now looks like they're con con content to uh, just kind of lay back and let the mistakes come to them. Otherwise, just leave the score where it's at. Pass to the middle. What a save there by Joe Young as Connor Fries let one go from the slot. Great centering feed by Fallis. Stubbs fends off a check, still with it. Fries to the middle. He scores! Connor Fries goes low, glove and in. Six, nothing, Dragons. Joe Young had lost his goal stick, so he wasn't able to get the low shot. And Fries keeps it low on the ice and scores. 
And how about that for Fries? Is that his second or third tonight? Connor Fries, his second of this game, third of this postseason. And man, oh man, what a day the River Dragons are having. You know the best news about that, Zach, is we get to listen to Brian Thomas. That indeed we do. I like listening to Brian Thomas. <laughs> means good things have happened. It means very good things. So, hey, Brian Thomas, why don't you give us a little talk here? Here he is. He shoots. Fries from Schultz as it's six nothing. Oh, almost seven nothing there as Sargis got a good tip on that puck and Joe Young sticked it away. Now here's O'Day giving it up to O'Brien. 15.50 to go here in period three. Dragon six, enforcers nothing. MJ Graham in the corner, fending off a couple of enforcers players. Mangone picks it out of the feet. Mangone, left circle, walks it, fires it. Save made Young, swallows that one up in the bread basket. 15-39 left to go in period three, Scott. Fries has two, Jansen has two, Doe and Sarges also on the board, and not a single enforcer has found the back of the net yet. And this, uh, this sellout crowd, as we said, uh, uh, we have people placed wherever we can put them tonight, but uh, it is incredible and, and, and I don't know if anybody's going to sit for the last 15 minutes of this, and uh, let's hope that we're able to dye the, uh, all the fountains in Fountain City a teal. We want to go with a teal. Well, that's safe. Just in case. Face off to the right of Young, and Elmira is going to get waved out of this draw. Jurich is going to have to come in for Ruiz. Jurich will win it. Minnie is tied up with a man that's Doe. Petra Antonio picks it out of the corner. Down for Doe. Doe gets tied up there by Minnie. He loses his edge, pushes it to the near side wall. Tucker loses his battle. Doe works it down further. Minnie takes it away from him on a body check, and Ruiz rims it around to the far boards. Jurich on the backhand picks up and goes back behind his own net for some support. 15-22 left to go here in period three. Kugler, nice check there. Jurich trying to work it ahead, and Howie got there first. Now here's Tucker, left wing, in over the line. Tucker at the high slot, fires, blockered away by Rutledge. Kugler in the middle, hit a body with it, and Howie from an E sends it down, not enough for icing now. Boy, great defensive play there by, uh, by the River Dragons, the entire defensive core there. Fries, oh, Kyler Matthews as he was heading off, picked his head up, found Fries, knocked him down. We play on here, C.J. Stubbs with it in his own zone. Stubbs moving this one up for Jake Schultz. Ooh, he caught a rut there in the ice. He's able to still move it down into the corner. Walters takes a big body. Fallis falls to a knee. Stubbs fires just wide of the blocker hand on Young. Schultz with it left point. One touch pass from Fallis. Nothing doing there. Fallis, or Fries, excuse me, ends up getting it right back. Schultz oh. trying to filter it through. Oh, and that's a big hit on that's Fries garbage. there from Walters. And Fries looking for a call, none coming. He reacquires his stick. Atkins then lays a hit onto a man. Fries gloves it out of the air. He gets pushed away from the puck. Now Atkins and Fries are sticking at each other. They're going to go. Fries tackles Atkins. Connor Fries has been frustrated by the lack of calls on him. Atkins and Fries both hacked and whacked at each other. And as soon as the gloves went off, Fries went in on a bull rush. And once again, the officials have been absolutely awful. They're not protecting us, so we're going to protect ourselves. And that was a fight caused by a lack of officiating. They're not getting involved. Walters earlier cross-checked him in the head, laid him on the ice. Fry's looking for help, not getting any help. Very disappointed the league's allowing this to happen. But you know what? How great is it we're sticking up for ourselves? 14-15 left to go in the third. Dragon six, enforcers nothing. And you just kind of get the feeling, Scott, the way this is going, it's going to start spiraling. It absolutely has. You know what? And if Elmira wants to go ahead and take the focus out, getting back in the game, even better. Enforcers are at a point now where they need a goal every two and a half minutes, let's say, maybe a little bit less than that even, to even come back to tie this. Dragon six, enforcers nothing. Game three of the Ignite Cup Finals. River Dragons looking to finish this one off. You know, it's unfortunate that Elmira wants to go out here and, and take these stupid penalties and, and, and play dangerous hockey, but it is what it is. Faceoff will come opposite the Elmira bench. How I wish Carolina was in the finals here. Sargis v. Shinkarik. Shinkarik will Huron. win it, and it gets pushed away here, and here's Essery. He'll send it into the zone. 
Rimmed around. Gravel with it left wing corner. Back behind for Essery. Now Shinkarik from behind the cage. Shinkarik, wow, couple of handles. Got around O'Brien, but a save by Rutledge on the one-timer from Essery. Carter Shinkarik was doing his best Sidney Crosby impression behind the net, but Rutledge still denies Essery on the one-timer. 60 seconds and we're back on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Nothing to do tonight. Want to bet? At Victory Land Casino, you'll find the latest and greatest gaming machines featuring fun bonuses and huge jackpots. Wager and win on horse and greyhound races from all over the world. And try your luck on our popular sports parlay promotion. Don't miss your chance to win at Victory Land Casino. Located off I-85, exit 22, Shorter, Alabama. Must be 21 or older. Hiding season is over. Riding season is here with Fort Benning Harley Davidson. We've got over 200 Harley Davidsons on site and we'll take anything with a VIN on trade. Plus, credit problems are a thing of the past. Good credit or bad, we'll get you on the road. Now is the time you've been waiting for. Hiding season is over. Riding season is here with Fort Benning Harley Davidson. Williams Road in Columbus. FortBenningHD.com. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. 13.59 left to go in the third. River Dragons six, enforcers nothing. Face off to the right of Rutledge. I'm Zach DeBozart, he's Scott Brand. Scott, what a night it has been so far. It absolutely has been. And uh, as we get a... Sarge is gonna get waved draw. out of the draw. For MJ Graham not lining up, and Graham gets to go and take the draw. There's something wrong about that. And Graham <laughs> will win it. Kugler has it behind the cage. O'Brien setting this off the near side boards. MJ Graham battled on there by Patterson. Graham finds it falling to his belly, gets it ahead for Sargis. Oh, Sargis, what a spinorama! And then he nearly cut across the face of goal to put it in. MJ Graham with it, left wing circle, pass for Mangone, was blocked by Patterson. Now here's Gravel up ahead. Kugler pokes it away from him, and Sargis with it. He'll play it out to the neutral zone. Oh, Mangone had it, couldn't turn up ice. Now MJ Graham with it, two on one. Graham, left circle, drives, score! MJ Graham! Adds the extra point. Seven, nothing, Columbus. I don't want to say the fat lady's getting ready to sing, but my date just showed up. 13-25 left to go in the third, and it's all Columbus here in game three. MJ Graham, nice drive to the net, gets it through Young, and it's now 7-0. Listen, now we're battling through everything that Elmira can throw against us right now. It's our night. Andre Graham, all hustle. That's it in the weight room late at night and just getting the things going. And you know who I get to hear from? Brian Thomas. Again. Here you go, Brian. He MJ Graham, the unassisted goal at the 6.35 mark of the third. It is Columbus 7, Elmira nothing. 13 minutes to go in the third. What was that about your date, Scott? Uh, she may have showed up. Ah, that lady's getting ready to sing. Listen, I hope I'm not paying Brian Thomas by the goal. Matthews will slam this one into the Columbus end. Brody Duncan races after it. He's with it near corner. Pass across his own goal line there underneath for Howie. And now up ahead, here's Mac Jansen. Jansen from the right wing will shoot that one into the zone. Joe Young from behind his own net. Mini dumps it off here. And Peavy checked by Jansen. Elmira having a tough time getting out of their own end. 30 shots up on the board there for Columbus. And they lead by a touchdown plus the extra point, 7-0. Here's Jurich right circle of drive. Save made Rutledge. Shrugged that one off and the crowd approves. Uh-oh, that uh. one got caught up in the referee's skates. Jurich and Zemlichka tie up on it here. Schultz trying to pick it out of the scrum. He will. Gerard holds in center point though. Gerard bobbing and weaving, fires one, deflected loose there for Jurich, and Schultz lifted his stick and hustled in first. Mac Jansen, near side, playing it out to center, too far ahead for O'Day, and Gerard gives it back for Walters. Oh, good move for Peavy to get around a man. Peavy left circle with it, blocked by Columbus in front. In case you're wondering, yes, we're playing prevent hockey. Here's Matt O'Day in over the line, drops it back. Oh, Jansen couldn't reach back and grab that one. He's on hat trick watch here tonight. Leonard from the left wing side sends that one into the zone. 
Preston Kugler, good job rubbing shoulders with him behind the net. Petrantonio working Leonard some more, and it'll be found on the far side circle by Columbus. O'Brien on the backhand, off the glass. Stubbs gets it in his path. Stubbs one-on-one -on -one right wing with Girard, holding him wide on the corner. Girard, good stick there to take it off of Stubbs and leave it for his teammates. Here's Gravel moving this one into the neutral zone. 11-18 to go in the third. Gravel, left wing circle. Kugler lifted his stick as he tried to drive the net. Shinkarik with it. Good bob around one. Pass to the right circle. Martin a drive. What a sliding block. Nate O'Brien getting down and dirty on that one. O'Brien forces it out. Mangone with some hustle. He might have a breakaway. Nick Mangone in all alone. Score! Nick Mangone! Listen, O'Brien better get an assist. Seven goal lead. He's blocking shots. That's a hockey player. Nick Mangone, he's been such a great sandpaper force in this final series, but right there gets rewarded for the hustle and buries goal number eight past Joe Young, 10.59 to go in the third. And Scott, are you sick of hearing from Brian Thomas yet? Boy, if I gotta pay him per goal, I'm gonna lose a lot of money tonight, but that's okay. Hey, Brian Thomas, could you give us, tell us who scored? He's enjoying it too much to talk. He shoots! On Assistant River Dragons goal, number 26, Nick Mangone! So Mangone, the unassisted goal at the 9.01 mark of the third period. Scott, you were giving all the props in the world to Nate O'Brien, though, back in the other end. He better get at it because, <laughs> again, 7 nothing. He blocks a shot and then throws it up ice. Mini from the red line shoots this one in. It's rimmed around for Brody Duncan. Behind the net, here's Tucker. He takes it off a Duncan stick. Jurich with it, right circle, blocked in front by Columbus. And out to neutral ice it goes. Kyler Matthews back in his own zone with it. 10-23 to go in the third. Yep, Dragons. Oh, don't let this one up. Uh-oh, look out. A penalty Come coming on. up here is how he trips up Jurich on his way to the net. Gerard fires one wide of the blocker hand. Off the glass. Mini still with it. Now Joe Young realizes it heads to the bench, and that one's going to trickle down towards the end, but Sargis is going to touch it. He'll backhand it in. Oh, and this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem, and it's going to create a brawl. Absolutely it is. Oh! There was a flying move from Sargis on Mini. It's gone all sorts of crazy. And this is all the referee's fault because they never controlled the game, Zach. Look at this. Looks like MJ Graham and Shin Carrick were feeding each other pretty good. The horn went off. That's not going to count. But kudos to our horn operator here. 8 nothing. 10 2 to go in the third. Duncan pumping up the crowd as he gets out of that scrum. Duncan could run for mayor tonight and win. <laughs> Rutledge gives Brody Duncan a big hug as he makes his way into the locker room. 10.02 left to go in the third, Scott. I have to believe a lot of guys' nights might be done. Columbus does not seem to care. MJ Graham, he pumps up the crowd some more. Listen to this, Scott. All because Woo. sports officials quit doing their job. Everything that went on tonight, we're going to call a hooking penalty or a tripping penalty. Well, and the Dragons okay. had enough. I mean, yes. But that puck sent in by Sargis. Good for him. <laughs> About time we answered fight fire with fire. So Jake Howie's going to go and deliver a couple of sticks back towards the locker room. Is anybody in the penalty box this guy? I think one River Dragon is. Oh, we got a piece of broken building, too. See the corner? The By the Sintos? Yep. Oh, Sintosh. yeah. Sintos getting some free advertising <laughs> tonight right next to Jason's Deli. By yeah. the way, they fed the... Uh, that stanchion. That stanchion just popped. That was where all that craziness was. Ten oh two left to go here in the third. Dragons eight, enforcers nothing, and never mind ice crew. The building crew's got to come out now and get this fixed up. Dare we even look over at the scoring sheet, Scott? And 
see what penalties we're getting out of this. This reminds me that my uh, my nephew Josh in Chicago, a lot of Chicago fans, he's a hockey player too. He the, probably likes this because he's able to check now. The initial call was on Columbus. However, I'm seeing a lot of waving down by the off-ice officials at the scorer's table. I think Josh Petrantonio's best not case happy, scenario. So. Well, yeah, but best case scenario, Columbus is going to be down two minutes out of this. Worst case scenario, it could be more. And some guys are returning from the locker room now to go serve their penalties. So there's a whole lot of a whole lot of nonsense to sort out here. We're trying to get some signals over I don't from think our official score. Either. I don't think this is far even close from being over. Well, of course not, Scott. There's still 10.02 well, to go I'm in the third. Well, I'm talking about the physicalness. Phys we... All right. So, so far, we don't have anything on Fed Hockey right now. Our scorer is not even looking at us. She says, give me a second, because the referees and off ice down low have to figure it out as well, too. This is what happens when you officiate the scoreboard. 8 nothing. River Dragons lead. Here in game three of the Ignite Cup Finals, the River Dragons 10-02 away from seeing themselves hoist that cup. And nobody has left the building in, back. In the third period, Connor Fries has gotten his second of the game, and then MJ Graham and Nick Mangone have tacked on some more. Jake Howie's being escorted to the penalty box. This was the initial call. Howie brought down Jurich, and not for nothing, Scott, that seemed like a clear breakaway for Jurich. So Howie's gonna go serve two minutes, but I mean, Jurich kind of has a case for a penalty shot. I know it's 8 nothing, but like, by the letter of the law, right? Don't look at me like that. I'm giving you the dirty <laughs> look. You're getting the stink eye. All, all of uh, the Chattahoochee Valley is giving you the stink. Yeah, you're right. Zach, I'm, you're, you're I'm, right. I'm thinking I mean, too much. You're, don't think about it. Think of it, it's 8 nothing, and and uh, everything has transpired, and they're worried about a tripping call. Probably could have been. At least it was a, a scoring opportunity. But uh, And then, obviously, we have the big hoot nanny here. And, uh, you know, at some point, the players are going to stop stop, uh, stop this. And uh, okay. the faceoff is in our zone, so I'm assuming we're going to be shorthanded. So Howie's in the penalty box for Columbus. I believe he's being joined by Garrett Sargis, who is one of the combatants. MJ Graham, Brody Duncan were also involved. We saw Gino Mini, I believe, skate off for Elmira. Nobody's in the enforcer's penalty box, but a couple of people had left the ice surface for the enforcers. As it stands right now, only Jake Howie's up. But we haven't really gotten a look at the on-ice situation here, Scott. Well, those guys probably want to make sure that they got the hot water. You know, it's important if you had a long bus ride home. 10.02 left to go in the third, and I guess it's just Howie. So it looks like this will be five on four. It'll be down in the Columbus end. By the way, in all of the chaos, the stanchion got fixed. It did. Get that was that was Once a again, real, real quick, real smooth job right there. Ice, ice crews in both buildings doing phenomenal jobs. Indeed. So it will be five on four. The Houston Clinic penalty kill on for the third time tonight for the River Dragons. Two for two previous. Jake Howie, two minutes for hooking, I believe was the call. And then we got a whole lot of roughs, a whole lot of fights, maybe a couple misconducts as well. We'll get you the full penalty summary when we can, if they even get it figured out. Uh, by the time the 10.02 left the third elapses. Ruiz wins the draw, we're back underway. Jurich lets one go, sent wide of the glove hand on Rutledge. Ruiz, far side wall, he gets checked there. Patterson sends it around, trying to reach Jurich. It does eventually get to him. Now he plays it over for Tucker, off the wall to Ruiz, right wing circle, being watched by Fallers. Ruiz, back to Gravel. Now Ruiz again with it, top of the right circle, a blast high over the glove hand on Rutledge. Here's Jurich with it, left point. Getting it across. Now Jurich gets it back. A one-timer blocked and a chance for Stubbs, but he's at the end of his shift and he'll just head off for a change. 35 seconds already gone in the Houston Clinic penalty kill. And Elmira electing to keep their goaltender in. I guess there's really no reason to, to, to pull him. Gravel moving this one through the middle. Four on three as he hits the line. Left wing drops it off for Ruiz. Good stick there by O'Brien to poke it away from him. Now this will be sent up by Jansen. Can't get it out as it hits an Elmira body. Patterson clogging up the wall. O'Brien works it around to O'Day. He sends it off boards. Gravel, nice job holding in right point. Jurich gloves it to himself. Pass across. Nobody home. And Columbus could go on a break if they wanted, but a good hustle back by Glenn Patterson. And now he brings it back into the zone onside. 
Patterson being worked there by Jansen. Down into the corner, it's Tucker. O'Brien watching over him. Tucker left wing circle with it. 40 seconds left to go in this man advantage. Jurich a blast, brought, blocked there in front by O'Day. Tucker across, right circle. He fires one. Oh, they score. Patterson got a tip in front. And that is about the only dark mark on the Columbus night. As Patterson got the tip in front, it's 8-1, 8.35 to go in the third and a power play goal. And this crowd was giving it to him. And, and Zach, uh, we're hockey guys, so we didn't want to use the word shutout, but that's what we were trying to secure was a shutout for Jared Rutledge. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he won't get that at this point. But uh, you know what? Uh, that's, that's, that's awfully tough to do. He did, he did stop him for uh, 40 and he had to 12, and that's 52 minutes. Yeah, that's about right. 8.35 left to go here in the third. See, eight kids, one. use math. Yeah, 8-1 Dragons lead. How about some more math for you here? If the enforcers want to get back in this one, they're going to need about a goal every minute and five seconds. They've won the draw, and we're back underway. Peavy reached behind him for that one, and icing, ooh, was the call, but Peavy had gotten around Kugler there, and this one might go back to center ice. 8.23 remaining in period three. No, it's a good call. Don't ever question the officials, Zach. Absolutely, it was icing. You're right, Scott. How dare I? <laughs> Face-off coming to the right of Joe Young. And Chase Fallis will take this draw for the Dragons. He'll be going against Peavy. Everyone gets set. Peavy directing some traffic. Fallis wins it. Mangone, Howie, left point of shot. That one just sent wide. Hussey chops that one out to center. Stubbs will retrieve it. He'll spin it back and give back to his defenseman. Jake Howie, far circle, sends that one up the wall. Mangone, given a rough ride there by Walters as he deflected it from the red line. No icing, and Elmira will have this. Matthews with it on the far side circle. He'll take his time. The pass from behind the goal line to Patterson. 7.53 to go here in period three. Patterson pushed to Jurich. Let's go Dragons, the chant here at the Civic Center. Crowd responding in rhythm. Matthews from behind, and Jurich will take the handoff. Drop back for Matthews. Elmira now out of their own zone. A pass ahead, and that one knocked away. Schultz will rim this one around. Off the dasher board, Doe couldn't pick it out, and Hussey will have it here for Elmira. Sent into the zone, delayed off sides, and the enforcers, ooh, they do end up touching that puck. 7.22 to go in the third, and we get our final media timeout. 8-1 Dragons on the Columbus River Dragons radio network. With refined finishes and open concept spaces, each floor plan at Summer Lake Apartments brings you unparalleled luxury and comforts. Smith Station's most beloved apartment homes show a purely contemporary feel. And this beautiful community playfully highlights the lush grounds and serene fishing lake. Summer Lake Apartments boasts community amenities such as the resort-style swimming pool. Schedule a tour today at SummerLakeAPTS.com or give them a call at 334-298-1543. Hey, did you know that one in three people are without adequate life insurance? At the Farmers Menifee Agency, it's always life insurance awareness season. Why don't you let one of our agents update your coverages and get policies in place to make sure your legacy is protected? We also write auto, home, boat, and renters insurances too. Stop by the 2429 Norris Road location in Columbus or call us at 706-341-1223. And guess what? At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we sing a thing or two. Back here at a raucous Columbus Civic Center. 7.22 to go in the third. Dragons, eight. Enforcers, one. Enforcers need a goal. One a minute at this rate. And it's going to be tough for them, but they've got the offensive zone possession. Tucker works it back for Ruiz in the slot. Too many River Dragons bodies around him, and he couldn't operate. Schultz has it here in the corner. A backhand for Petra Antonio. Goes wide of him. Tucker trying to box out the Dragons captain. And Schultz sends this one around. He'll find Zemlichka. Far side corner, Zemlichka blocked by Ruiz on the entry, excuse me, on the exit attempt, and Schultz will have it behind the net. Schultz working it up for Petra Antonio. Patterson had vacated the left point. Elmira has to touch up here. Tucker's in over the line, through the middle, a pass left wing side, it finds Peavy. Peavy left circle, blockered away there by Rutledge. To the middle, a chance for Tucker. That one sent wide. Now right point, Matthews with it, blocked by Doe. Matthews with it again, and now wide of the blocker hand on Rutledge. Walters for Jurich, he tried to one-touch it down into the corner, and Schultz will finish off his man, Petra Antonio, 
dumps it, but it's not out. Center point Matthews holds, and that's loose, and Rutledge will find it and pounce on it, ranging over to his right. 6.20 left to go here in the third. Dragons eight, enforcers one. Connor Fries and Mitch Atkins allowed to return to their respective benches. Do you have a feeling Fries is going to get something to get back on the score sheet? I don't know. He's been on hat trick watch. Eight to one. And you know what? It wouldn't he, be more salt in the wound at that point. Like, here's the thing with him, too. is He's such an offensive player. You know, you, you don't think of him as a fighter, and, and he doesn't mind getting ugly. He does not. That's for sure. Connor Fries, I think among the new guys, I mean, there's so many new guys who you can just classify as favorites, but Connor Fries, I mean, he's one that he plays all sorts of roles. There is nothing on the ice that it seems like he can't do. He's definitely, I think, one of the newer fan favorites. Of course, you also got to shout out guys like Jake Schultz and Mac Jansen. Here's Brett Gravel from the right circle. Save made Rutledge a rebound near him, and he will glove it over to his left. And then, of course, you got the returning vets like Jared Rutledge, who've just been playing phenomenal up and down the roster. It's been all Columbus, 8-1 with 6.14 to go in the third. Well, the other important thing about Fries, he's got great hockey hair. I mean, how do you not like a guy who's got the hair hanging out of the back of his helmet? And he fought a guy named Henry Berger, and I think oh, that yeah. got some notoriety in the hockey world as well. Right point, Elmira has it, D to D across. Matthews getting it back for Walters. His shot padded away by Rutledge, saw it through traffic. Atkins with it, checked by Fries, trying to pick it out of feet. O'Brien, he'll move it up the far side wall. Gravel giving it back to the right point. Walters lets one go. Save made, Rutledge has it in the paraphernalia and takes a whistle. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Columbus River Dragons radio network. to go here in period three. Dragons eight, enforcers one. And this would be the time, I think, Scott, if we had the the shots down there, I think we'd see the keeper of the cup starting to unbox it, eh? I I think that's probably happening in the back there. Uh, Of course, nobody's looked at it because you don't do that in hockey, but uh, that's the way this seems to be playing out. Walters through the middle, a give, right wing side. Elmira's in over the line, pass to the middle. Gravel couldn't get a stick on it. Kugler, a good defensive posture. Matthews back at his own, back at the red line, excuse me, gives that one up and Atkins chips it into the zone for Elmira. Rutledge slows it up there, plays it behind the net. Nice little touch as he sends it for Howie and it goes sent all the way around. Patterson has it at the red. Patterson in over the line. Too many Columbus sticks to go through. Jansen dropped it back for Petrantonio. Off a, off a skate. Here's Mangon with it. Left wing circle. Mangone fires. Shoulders saved there by Young. Jansen in effort. And Young will eventually find it. Good rebound effort saved there by Joe Young. who looked like he was falling away from the puck. 5.09 to go here in period three. Yeah, I think Young's just waiting for this evening to be over. He didn't get much help tonight. And, uh, and so he'd like to get rid of it. And, uh, of course, um, everybody else just uh, counting on that clock before we can celebrate here in the Chattahoochee Valley. We have a couple ice cold Pepsis or Diet Pepsis, the case may be. Face off coming to the right of Young. Fries will get waved. Fallis will come in to take this draw against Peavy. Tied up in the centerman's feet. And it'll be skated away there by Leonard. Leonard taking some stick work from Stubbs as he dumps it in from the right side of Red. Good. Zemlichka over for Schultz. Those two play some catch underneath the goal line. Now Zemlichka ahead for Fries. Nice pass. Fallis, one touch for Stubbs. Stubbs giving it back for Fallis, left wing. Fallis in the corner. Checked there by Martin. He falls onto his backside. Puck is in between his skates still. Peavy trying to pick it out. Found in Leonard's feet. Still in the zone for Columbus. Pass across. Schultz has it right point. Schultz firing one. That one wide of the glove hand as Fallis was trying to set a screen. Fries with it to Zemlichka at the left point. Zemlichka back for Fries in the slot, and Hussey with an active stick took it away from him. Fries, oh, good check there by on Martin, and then Martin's stick got a little crazy, and I think clipped Connor Fries in the side of the head. He's slow to get out of the zone, and Schultz had to wait for him there. Is there a penalty coming up? No, no there is not. Okay. Just checking. Elmira has this back behind their own net with Bryce Martin. 4.06 left to go here in the third. The Dragons with a 2-0 lead in the best of uh, five series. Face-off. Do the math. Yeah, do the math. Off the face-off dot. Now moving into the right wing side, Leonard. Columbus takes it away. Pass too far ahead for Mangone. Ruiz with it at the red line. Up ahead here for Brandon Tucker. Left wing circle from behind the net. It's Jurich with it now. 
Jurich firing one. Stick save made by Rutledge. Rebound found on the near circle. And with some speed, skating ahead, here's Nate O'Brien. O'Brien gets the legs turning, puts it to the slot, couldn't come back on it. Mangone fishes it out, fires, blocked by Walter, sent wide. Rebound, an effort there by Doe to play it to the middle. And now, nice fancy pass by Mangone, finding O'Day, left wing corner. JT Walters bodies him. Mangone and Doe with a little give and go behind the net. Columbus changing behind this. Mangone, oh, what a knock out of the air after he lifted it. Mangone is just feeling some kind of way right now. He loses the puck, but Walters pushes it ahead, and here's Brandon Tucker. Two on two as he hits the line. Jurich trailing the play. Dropped it for him, and Jurich couldn't reach it. Petra Antonio kicks it to his stick, moving it ahead and filtering it through for Stubbs, who's right on the back of Kyler Matthews, but he pushes it to a defenseman under three minutes to go in the third. Last time the uh, Columbus hockey team won a championship was 2005, and it happened to be right here in this very building. 2005 in the building. 2012 the building. was on the road. 2012, sorry. Here's Martin in over the line, two on three. Martin had his stick chopped, and this one will be sent out there as Fries pushes it towards Fallis, and Patterson was able to knock him away at the blue. Essery can't handle the pass. Howie, one touches it ahead. Fallis on the near side boards with a stick clash, plays it towards the slot, and Martin first on it there for the enforcers. 2.20 left to go here in the third. Dragons up seven. How loud do you think this building's going to get when oh, we get to Oh, I can't minute? wait to hear it. Howie with this, left wing circle. He'll go off for a change as Martin in the corner. Now Patterson trying to skate this one up and Doe forced him back. Patterson up ahead, Mitch Atkins left wing. At the red line, he hits it three on three now. Atkins firing one across, no one available in the slot for a tip. Petra Antonio forces that one out along the far wall and here's Doe with some space ahead. Doe fires, blocked by Walters. That one goes into the mesh and out of play with 144 remaining here in period three. And Scott, take a look down to our left. Look at all of those red jerseys. I know some of them are players, uh, but there is different staff, different media, different fans that are ready to go in a minute and 44 from now. You know who else is ready to go is the R interns is uh is a lot of them the first time even involved with ice hockey and and uh, everything that's gone on this year. It's uh, they're going to get a chance to, to see what it's like to uh, to win a championship, particularly at home. Faceoff coming to the right of Young. It's fall started on. Petra Antonio v Hussey. A lot of discussion with the linesman here and Hussey. Well, he was going to throw himself out of the draw, but the linesman tells him to come back. Petra Kindler gentler. Petra Antonio wins it, and Walters falling backwards, able to get a pass over to Matthews. 135 remaining here in period three. Dragons eight, enforcers one. The Civic Center ready to explode. Hussey with it over the red line. This one kicked towards net. Rutledge will stick it away. Schultz rims this one around. Hussey from behind the net. Left it there at the side. Rutledge will find it, and he will glove it and take a whistle. 120 remaining in period three. Dragons eight, enforcers one. I see you, Torch I, and Scorch have made their way into that tunnel. Well, now it's official. I mean, fans, if Scorch and Torch are here, it's got to be official. A hundred or a, a, a minute 20 left in this game. I'm going to go ahead and say that I think you can pretty much say that your River Dragons are probably going to go ahead and need a goal every 12 seconds as it stands right now. And, and you can see it from the broadcast angle. I mean, there's players mixed in with fans that are just beating on the glass, ready to go. Schultz rims this one around. It hits a stanchion. It stays in for Elmira. Now it's poked up ahead. Mangone left wing side. He'll give it up for Fries, who's on hat trick watch. Sticked away. Good hard stick there from Walters. Schultz pokes it ahead. Elmira takes it back at their own blue from Tucker. Fans are on their feet. One minute left to go here in the third. Listen to this crowd. Tucker moves this for Jurich in over the line, and Fallis will knock it away. 43 seconds left to go here in the third. Walters takes this one back behind his own net. Fallis watching after him. Played ahead for Ruiz. He chops at it with Petra Antonio in over the line. Ruiz fakes the shot right circle. That one blocked away. Schultz, far side wall, trying to skate this one ahead. He has it. Now a pass right wing to Stubbs. 22 seconds left. Schultz, right circle, fires. That one blocked by Patterson and sent wide. 
This one will go out to the neutral zone. Tucker in a stick battle with Petrantonio. It's dumped back in. A dozen seconds left to go in the third. Petrantonio from the red line plays it back for Schultz, and Schultz back for Zemlichka. The crowd will take you home. In a season we didn't know would happen, the River Dragons have pulled it off. The Ignite Cup final sweep, three games out of three, and Columbus will take home the trophy, the first pro hockey championship in the Fountain City in over nine years. Eight to one, Columbus beats Elmira. And that is a happy group of hockey players down there, Scott. The gloves, the helmets, the sticks, everything strewn about the ice. Columbus, Georgia, congratulations. You're hockey world champions right now. And I got to tell you what, is, uh, you know, you can talk about short seasons, but you, everything that's going on in the world today, I am so happy for, for the Chattahoochee Valley, and, and I'm happy for our league to be able to get through and play hockey. You know, we say some bad things about Elmira because they deserve them, but hats <laughs> wow. off to them. Uh, you know, a lot of them still got a lot of class, and, and uh, they showed up to play. Port Huron, Carolina, you got nothing to be ashamed of either, but right now tonight, it's all Columbus River Dragons. The night belongs to Columbus and the River Dragons. The first pro hockey championship of the COVID season, if you will, Scott, awarded here in the Federal Prospects Hockey League the River Dragons with the sweep of the Elmira Enforcers, eight to one, the final score as the teams get ready to line up for the ceremonial handshake, a great tradition in all of sports and especially here in the hockey world. I mean, Scott, what more is there to say from the word go? You can tell Columbus had a fire in their belly, a goal, 120 in from Mac Jansen, and it just continued to pour on from there. Absolutely, and, and uh, as you said, now comes the greatest uh, part in hockey. You beat each other up for, for three games, and now comes the handshake line, and that's the best thing about hockey, is you get to kill each other for 60 minutes, but afterwards you realize this is two warriors that went at it, and, uh, and uh, White Chattahoochee Valley, we can celebrate tonight. Jay Krupp was absolutely fired up at center ice giving the crowd everything he had, and they responded right back. What a series we had here, Scott. And going back to the two games in Elmira, after games one and two, there was no way you could have seen this one coming. I know game two was in double overtime, and I know that had to be a deflating win for Elmira, but after, what, five, six days to be able to recover, yes, there was travel involved, but Obviously, for the enforcers now from here and from their effort in 2019 where they lost to Carolina in the Commissioner's Cup Finals, uh, the enforcers just a little bit snake bitten in these finals. Yeah, there's no question about it. Listen, the River Dragons we knew had the talent all year and uh, and they proved it tonight. And, you know, let's quit saying nice things about everybody. Let's just, <laughs> we're, we're the champions. Indeed, the River Dragons are Ignite Cup champions. As the handshake line continues, we see everybody shaking hands and honoring each other after what was, it was a very good series, Scott. I mean, take nothing away from it just because of the score line here in game number three. You just look at it, even 120 in, you knew Elmira was still pushing the pace, but for me, after it was 3 nothing, you could just tell it was full steam ahead and Columbus would never let off that gas pedal. Yeah, actually, I, you know, I thought 4 nothing was when it was over, but, uh, you know, um, I don't know what to say. You get to win one on your home ice. It's unfortunate circumstances, but thank you to the 1,500 that showed up and all those that listened on the radio, watched on the internet, and of course, Bones TV. Thank you so much, Bones TV, for allowing us to celebrate on the, in the Chattahoochee Valley. Torch and Scorch doing some crowd work on the far side, and guys are 
starting to get their hats from the bins over there. And I tell you what, Scott, up and down this lineup, you could just tell it, it was a group that was bought in. Guys knew their roles. And one thing I will remark, it was it was a fortunate group because not too many injuries in a shortened season, and, and injuries will always derail you. But when your season's only about two months, it was very critical, I think, this team stayed healthy, and they did so for pretty much the entirety of the season. Maybe yeah. one or two you know, nicks and bumps and bruises here, but... Otherwise, I mean, what a team. Absolutely, they did. And uh, listen, not much more to say. We're the champs. Uh, congratulations, boys. We'll uh, take a couple days, celebrate, start to get ready for baseball, and start rebuilding a hockey team for next year. Let's take a break. Two minutes, and then we come back. The Ignite Cup will be on the ice after this. Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Well, Chopper Nutrition are proud to be supporting your Columbus River Dragons in the Ignite Cup playoffs. Located at 7600 Schaumburg Road in Columbus, stop in for breakfast or lunch and try one of their healthy and delicious meal replacement shakes and loaded teas that are packed with vitamins and energy. Open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, and 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday. They are there for you every day of the week. Give them a call at 762-822-1665. That's 762-822-1665. Six, six, five. It's been over a dozen years, Columbus, but finally we can say it, baseball is back. The Columbus Chattahoots will call Golden Park home in 2021, and you can reserve your spot now for every home game this season with a season ticket membership. Visit GoHoots.com slash tickets to get started on picking your ideal seat to see the Hoots take the field in June. Members get all sorts of perks too, like merchandise savings, playoff ticket priority, and more. Full season packages start as low as 125 and are available at GoHoots.com slash tickets. Go Hoots.com slash tickets. Nothing to do tonight. Want to bet? At Victory Land Casino, you'll find the latest and greatest gaming machines featuring fun bonuses and huge jackpots. Wager and win on horse and greyhound races from all over the world. And try your luck on our popular sports parlay promotion. Don't miss your chance to win at Victory Land Casino. Located off I-85, exit 22, Shorter, Alabama. Must be 21 or older. I want a vacation of the wild kind Wild animal safari is what I have in mind Feed the monkeys, camels, emus, and what to see too Here comes one He's got a slobber on you Get your wild life on Wild animal safari Get your wild life on Wild animal safari Wild animal safari Get your wild life on Wild animal safari Get your wild life on Wild animal safari We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. The enforcers have left the ice. The River Dragons have not. Lots of hugs, lots of handshakes, lots of happy humans down there at the ice surface. And you can see, actually, Scott Brand is down there congratulating the players as well. We allowed him to go down there. We're running it up here solo. We've got a lot of cameras, a lot of pictures going on here. Cannot wait to look at all of these moments captured back. The River Dragons Ignite Cup champions. An 8-1 win over the Enforcers here on home ice. After taking the first two up in Elmira, I think a lot of people thought it was a matter of win versus if, and the win happened as soon as it could. Three games to nothing, the sweep. And they're starting to get the pictures lined up here. We haven't even had the cup yet onto the ice, but we have got the bunch up of guys, as you can see right there. They're facing camera away from us. And this crowd, listen to them. Again, ladies and gentlemen, your night cup champion, Columbus Roman Dragon. What a moment. What a breath of fresh air for this city. After everything gone through in the world over the last year or so, and again, so many of us wondered if this season would even be possible. Not only was it possible, but the River Dragons thrived, had the number one seed. It took every single point possible 
by the points percentage to play this game here, but they did it and they earned it and they made the most out of it. Dragons eight, Enforcers one. Your scoring summary from this one. Mac Jansen had the first two goals in this game. We'll get you three stars as well. Don't think they're gonna be announced on the ice with all the guys out there. We're still waiting for the Ignite Cup to make its way through. Mac Jansen with the first two goals. Then it was Austin Doe who had it three nothing through the opening 20 minutes. Connor Fries and Garrett Sargis, they both put one home in the second. Fries another one to start the third. MJ Graham and Nick Mangone. At that point it was eight to nothing. And then Glenn Patterson on a power play was able to tip one past Rutledge, eight to one. And that is how it finishes on this 2021 FPHL season. You can see family members, so many different people out there just congratulating these guys who have worked tirelessly for two months to get to this point, to their ultimate goal. And they succeeded and they did so in spades. We can see the table being set up here. We're keeping it with you here on TV and on the YouTube channel for as long as, well, we can, as long as stuff is going on on the ice. But we're expecting to hear remarks from FBHL Commissioner Don Kernan once the Ignite Cup is presented. And he will give it to River Dragons captain Josh Petrantonio. It will be the second straight time that Don Kernan will be awarding a trophy to Josh Petrantonio. Of course, two or so years ago, Petrantonio, a member of the Carolina Thunderbirds, who were Commissioner's Cup champions in a four-game series, three to one. The Thunderbirds won that one. That was in Elmira here for Petrantonio. I have to imagine a little bit of a different feeling being at home. And let's see, we got something down here on the ice. Well, there you heard it. Taylor Blackwell, our director of Game Ops here in the Civic Center, just announced the Ignite Cup will be coming through. I'm down here with Don Kerman, the FDHL commissioner, who's going to unveil the Ignite Cup trophy. Thank you very much. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Get up there on the table there on YouTube. There it is. And the Ignite Cup trunked up still. Would have expected to maybe see it out, but this is a bit of a grand reveal. Hey guys, what can we get this mic volume turned up? First, Here's Don Kernan. Thank you very much. Also, I'd like to thank all the players that played through COVID. We're the only league once the four teams played that played all their games on time in the entire United States. Let's time to bring the cup out. <laughs> hey, come on up, guys. <laughs> Raising it out of the trunk. Don Kernan reveals the sparkling silver Ignite Cup. Josh Petrantonio there to accept. The photo op over. And then they'll crowd around it before doing their victory laps. Getting a good look at that on YouTube and of course still with us here on TV on WTVM bounce 9.2 that's a pretty trophy that's a good looking team around it the river dragons ignite cup champions and we will wait for josh petrantonio to hoist it high Hanga Banner, Columbus, the River Dragons are Ignite Cup champions. Petra Antonio, the captain, will take the first lap. And who will he hand it off to? This is always something in the hockey world. Who gets that first handoff 
It's his good buddy, Jay Krupp. Jay Krupp, who was scratched out of this game with an upper body injury. I'm sure he's not feeling it right now. That cup feels like it weighs nothing for him. Next to get it, Chase Fallis, number 14 out of Calgary, Alberta. Chase Fallis didn't know if he was going to come back, didn't know if he could come back with the COVID season because of the Canadian border. Got back, made the most of his opportunities here. And if he's done, he'll retire a champion. If not, the River Dragons would love to have him back. He's been a great player over the last two years. Austin Doe, a huge playmaker in these Ignite Cup Finals. He takes a turn. Who's next? That is Seth Ens. No, Garrett Sargis, excuse me. 21, not 29. Garrett Sargis, what a find he was in midseason for the River Dragons. He was a sniper with so many goals. And oh yeah, here is Jake Howie. Howie, another one of those original River Dragons who, fun fact, came here as a forward, transitioned back to defenseman, and he has been phenomenal in a Columbus jersey and at times for Pensacola on call-up. Next up, Mac Jansen, the River Dragons' leading point getter and second star in tonight's game. By the way, your three stars of the game, we'll get to you in a moment. I guess we'll just tell them to you as they go on. We saw Petra Antonio, he was star three. Jansen was star two. And here's Jake Schultz raising the trophy high above his head. If that watch party's still going on in Rochester, New York, keep it going for your man, Jake Schultz. What a force he was from the blue line. A power play machine with the goals. And he locked it down defensively, too. He hands it off to C.J. Stubbs. C.J. Stubbs, the Utah native. He has ECHL experience. And man, oh man, did he show his maturity in this series, how great he was. He'll pass it off to another original River Dragon, M.J. Graham. He really got himself going late in this season. And of course, had a goal in this one here tonight as well. Next up, it's number 15, Matt O'Day. O'Day plays a little defense, plays a little forward. Anything Jerome Bichard asks, it seems like he can do it and do it well. And he'll hand it off to his D partner, the double overtime hero, Nate O'Brien. And the crowd appreciates him. O'Brien, no points in this one, but man, he left his mark on this series in that double overtime game back on Saturday. Next up, another defenseman. It's the Czech native, Wojtek Zemlichka. Zemlichka often paired up with Schultz, a great playmaker back for the River Dragons, over 20 assists this season. And he'll hand it off next to, I'll be honest guys, one of my personal favorites, Connor Fries. I mean, what can you say about Connor Fries? He scores goals, he makes plays, he fights. I think he had a Gordie Howe hat trick in this game. He's all over the ice, up and down all season. He was phenomenal. And he'll pass it off to Preston Kugler. Kugler, who was here year one off of a trade from Watertown, a little bit in and out of the lineup, but I know that feels good for him too. And Brody Duncan, how about Brody Duncan, the Ohio native, a lot of people wondered if he would play hockey. They didn't like the River Dragons signing of him, but what a force, what a playmaker he was. And you got a feel for him. Brody Duncan, congratulations. And hey, look who's next. It's Ivan Bondarenko, unfortunately held out of this series with a lower body injury. Again, much like Jay Krupp, probably not feeling it too much right now. And here it is to star number one for tonight's game. Number one in the stars, number one on the ice, Jared Rutledge. I mean, my goodness. Jared Rutledge hoisted high over his head. An original River Dragon himself. Three of the best games I think he has played in his life have happened right here in this final series. And he hands it off to Nick Mangone. This crowd's gonna love Nick Mangone. 
A Danbury hat trick, Loney. If Danbury keeps rights to him, they are getting a firecracker of a player. Nick Mangone, Ignite Cup champion. Seth Enser, he goes with the one-handed approach as he pumps up the crowd. Enser, unfortunately, held out of this series as well with a lower body injury. But man, was he steady on that blue line, the Sugarland, Texas native, as he was one of the revamped defense corps that the River Dragons sought out. They knew they needed to do that to rebuild and make a championship run no matter what the season would look like. And they obviously did it. There's gonna be some more guys, I think, that need to do it, but we're giving it up. It's tough to see who that is. Everybody's down there. It's a young kid with a walker, hoisting the cup with the help of Bondarenko, Zemlichka, Krupp and Enser. The cup has made its rounds through the team and there's Jerome Boom Boom Bichard. A champion with the cotton mouth a couple of times over as a player and as a coach. Now for the first time as a River Dragon. He'll pass it over to assistant coach Brant Sherwood. Signed during the COVID season as a player opted for a coaching role and man he was instrumental in that locker room it's hard to gauge obviously statistically or even schematically how assistant coaches impact the room but let me tell you Brant sherwood he has a bright future of coaching and there is ignite sports owner jeff Krupp as he gets down and he says gather around me boys let's start up the pictures josh petra antonio doing some media Let's take another break, two minutes, and we'll be back here at the Columbus Civic Center. We'll see anything more that happens on the ice and put a bow on this one. The River Dragons, your Ignite Cup champions after an 8-1 win in game three. We're back in two minutes on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Let's Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase productivity, increase security, no way. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. Welcome to the Chattabrucci. That's right, the Chattabrucci Southern Brew House is the official post-game hangout of the Columbus River Dragons, serving their exclusive River Dragon Red Ale on all game nights, located just a mile and a half from the Civic Center at 1301 6th Avenue. There's no excuse not to get out with some friends and enjoy the night with some quality craft brews. Chattabrucci Southern Brew House is locally and veteran-owned and offers live music from 6 to 10 on Friday and Saturday nights. Make sure to follow them on social media for all the latest events. Looking for the best pizza in town for the price? Look no further than Pizza Pronto in Columbus. Pizza Pronto on 2nd Avenue in downtown Columbus has some of the best dishes around. And they aren't stingy with the toppings either. Pizza, pasta, kebabs, and more. It's all great at Pizza Pronto. Call in a to-go or delivery order at 706-596-9855. That's 706-596-9855. Give them a like on Facebook and enjoy some of your favorite meals today. The 501 Salat Experience is Columbus's most rejuvenating self-care center in town. We want you to be happy and satisfied with our services, and we do our very best to get it just right. Don't be shy. Give us a call at 706-940-0451, and our team will be happy to make you feel your very best. Each appointment at 501 Salon will provide you with personalized attention with a stylist of your choice. We look forward to your visit at 1238 Broadway in Columbus. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. The River Dragons, they haven't left yet. That cup still on the ice. Jay Krupp, he wants to do another lap with it. River Dragons win the Ignite Cup 8-1 on a game three, three game zero sweep. 
for the River Dragons in the Ignite Cup Finals. And now an off season where, let's be honest, there might be some guys moving up to different leagues after performances like this. In a year again, where we didn't know if it would happen, where there was so much uncertainty to play every game on time, to be as dominant as the River Dragons were, and to sweep in the finals. What a moment, what a team. What more can you say about this Columbus River Dragons squad? We are gonna get ready to sign it off here at the Civic Center. We've still got a lot to do on the back end. You'll see probably some more from us here on social media. Big thanks to so many different people all throughout this season. First off, just from today's game, Nate O'Brien was our Inside the Lair pregame show guest on the radio network. Scott Brand next to me all throughout this season having some lighthearted moments it was a lot of fun to be alongside him along this crazy up and down ride in the two months that was this COVID season chris mcguire stephen pierce so much props to you guys handling the production work off here or off air here uh, i mean chris you were able to go with us up to elmira to be able to take the youtube show on the road i know fans appreciated that we loved being able to bring the game for you uh, through wherever we went, on the road, at home. It was so much fun, and those guys deserve all the credit in the world. So many different people behind the scenes in the social media department to thank as well. Allison Holiday, Derek Mendola, Javaris Harris on tonight's game throughout. Elizabeth Baez, Jamie Udette, Taylor Blackwell, who of course also runs the Game Ops here at the Civic Center as well. All of the different members of the front office. Of course, at the very top, Jeff Krupp, the owner of Ignite Sports. Uh, Sidney Vadney, Taylor St. Jacques, Diego Wilson, uh, Shannon Rutledge, the assistant GM. And of course, her and her husband, Jared Rutledge. Uh, this was a long time coming from them. You could tell that Jared, he was feeling it in this one. And Shannon had that same energy in the office. I tell you what, it was just an unbelievable run. Everybody here at the Civic Center, Rob Landers, Nixon Patterson, Jeremy Ackles, uh, Lisa Goodwin, Kenise Wiggins, and so many more administratively that we need to thank guys like Ronnie Mills and Sirik Chapman, so many on, just on the front lines that help us here in the building get things set up game by game and just uh, do what we need to do to be able to bring this for you every night, not only on the air, but here in the building as well. I mean, we wouldn't have had fans if it wasn't for the diligent work of the Columbus Civic Center staff and all of the admins here. Sorry, my camera worked not that great, Chris. I understand. Great graphic you got set up there. I appreciate it. As, uh, here, you, you know what? You go ahead and take that. This is why it's your thing, not mine. Everybody back at PMB Broadcasting, Joseph Brandon, Dave Arwood, Brian Thomas, who you heard here uh, on the call for the PA, Brian Thomas, who did a lot of voice work for us, Joseph Brandon, the lead engineer, Dave Arwood, Lori Lee. I mean, you guys were all phenomenal at the flagship to help us get this out over the radio. And, of course, Ryan O'Neill and the rest of the crew at Jordan Communications to allow us to have a multi-state network uh, here in minor pro hockey, something I don't think you see very often, and to be honest with you, is a very underrated part about the sports experience. More people should definitely be looking at radio, especially for live sports. And you guys, both you guys, PMB and Jordan Communications, we love you so much. And of course, the crew at WTVM. We're here on WTVM Bounce 9.2 for a couple more minutes. Thank you so much, Tracy, Pam, Brian. Aaron, I mean, I could keep listing off names all day. There are so many people that help make television possible. You know, we think radio is nice and easy, and television it's so many more hoops, and they were able to guide us through to get games on, not only in the regular season, but here, this clinching one as well. Uh, there's probably so many more I'm forgetting for all the media teams that came out and covered the River Dragons throughout the year, everybody that followed us on social media, everybody here at the Civic Center who braved COVID and came to the games to support this team, your hard work, your dedication did not go unnoticed. This season is all for you just as much as it is for them down there in red. All right, I think that'll just about do it. I'm Zach DeBozart. For everybody that I just mentioned, everyone on YouTube who was watching it along all season, participating in the live chats, we love you guys too. We are going to sign it off for the season. The Columbus River Dragons 2021 Ignite 
Cup champions. If you're on television, we will return you to your regularly scheduled programming already in progress on YouTube and on the radio stations and on the radio network. We are signing it off from here. Your final score, Columbus 8, Elmira 1, the River Dragons Ignite Cup champions in a three-game sweep. Until next time, we will see you. Oh, I, oh, hold on. We actually will see you. We've got the last Swamp Fox and Stilling Company coaches show. Stay tuned to our social media pages. You'll see more about that. Until next season, though, here from the Civic Center, I'm Zach DeBozart. Have a good night, everybody. Celebrate this one, Columbus. You are champions once again. To the post-game show on the River Dragons broadcast.